We have uh, a quorum for this meeting, uh, so let's go ahead and get started because I know that we have quite a few things to go through uh, and oh so limited time. So does anybody have any announcements for the good of the body? Anybody have any announcements? Okay, so moving forward, let's move on into public comment. We will start uh, with the first person uh, on who signed in today, Marjorie Fleming. Would you please uh, come up to the podium and introduce yourself and if you'd like, give your address for the record. One second, Marjorie. Let's make sure you, we can hear you. Hey. That's what everybody says. You don't talk loud enough. Uh, my name is Marjorie Fleming, hey, and my address is 620 South Oliver Avenue, Apartment A. And I am here today to talk about the dog parks. I used to live on the west side, and Meridian Dog Park is was my first dog park that my dog and I had visited, and she was a rescue. And uh, I am understanding from Dale that you guys, the city was going to look at that park and updating it. And it doesn't seem like it's getting done, anything going. So uh, many of us would like to get some things going on there. Uh, I visit many dog parks uh, in the state and in this community because now I'm on the east side, so I've been at Harrison Dog Park. and. When I first started going to Harrison's Dog Park, I was very upset because after being at Meridian Dog Park and seeing what was at Harrison Dog Park, it was like, they're not treating the dog parks the same. I've also been to uh, Chapin, which is just like nothing, bare. I've also, my new other place I go to, favorite place, is at the Humane Society, and I'm real frustrated, and I've called in sometimes and say, hey, there's no doggy bags in the thing and that's you know and then it'll be like a week later before they get them out there and there's a hole in one of the baskets and you can't uh, there's trash bags that's on the ground that you have to fill in filling those up getting those helping us to do better at the dog parts would be accessible because it's bad enough when we can't get the people to pick the stuff up let alone um, uh, not having the things that we need to do it Many of us will stick bags on the, as we're walking around. I know at the Humane Society we do it and also at Meridian on the fences, so maybe it would get people to pick it up. But even having stations in the middle would be helpful. But my main purpose today on Meridian is that to come um, to see about starting up fundraisers for that park. I'm interested, I've talked to people in groups, I have several ideals. I'm kind of like a new event planner. And uh, I know that Wolf's stock is coming up, and I would like to have a Meridian stock where we have vendors and stuff would pay. And at the end of the very front of Meridian, there's a whole big lot that could have people out there, you know, and we could uh, charge them so much to do. And maybe convince them to give us like three or five percent of their outcome to go back towards the park. I've got t-shirts I'm having made to sell to people who would like to buy t-shirts with like $10 going back towards it. And so I know that you have an account, but I don't know where that money would go to. Um, also, uh, I just spent doing the, working at the silent auction for Jubilee. And if everybody's, anybody's been to Jubilee, they know they have this big silent auction. And I thought, you know, going around and getting donations. I only saw one animal dog donations. Well, I mean, we have many dog places here in the community, so that would be another thing, to get silent doing that. Going to vendors where, who have like Johnson's uh, and other things that have trees and stuff like that could maybe donate to trees to us, or maybe a construction company. I have one construction company in mind. I went to school with the owners. <laughs> I grew up with them. They're from a small town. And I'm here, and I'm like, I want to type you guys and say, hey, can you help us out? I've seen some really cute things done. Uh, I would like to see at Meridian a splash park. I know you guys hate them going down to the river, but uh, you know that's one of the one, one of the nice things that the dogs get to do is go down there and play in the water and come back. And it's that is a nice thing that they go with their animals and they come back. And I know it's not right, but because they're not always on their leash, but they're very obedient and it's a fun thing. I took my dog to Dykster Park on Saturday 
and they had the sprinkler system going on during the middle of the day, which would be kind of nice to do that instead of waiting and be muddy by the time we get there first thing in the morning at 7.30 at Meridian. But I couldn't get the dog out of the place. She's a doodle, and she was loving it. So if we even had a place with that. I seen some of the fancy things that you had designed, and it's, you know, that seems like it'll take forever to raise that. And I would like to make it more simpler because uh, it can be simpler and cheaper to just upgrade it a little bit. That's all we want is some places to set, some shade, you know, some things like that. So that's basically why I'm here. I'm here to see what I can find out from you guys because my other person <coughs> is not really giving us any information. Okay. Questions so, for our questions for our speaker? Troy. So I got a lot of information for you. So passed the budget. Um, and Councilmember Fry is there in the back, and he helped pass the budget. We have three hundred thousand uh, dollars going in next year. It's in twenty twenty three budget uh, for dog parks. And uh, David McGuire, who's the park superintendent, has been working with Del Goder specifically, and shared with him a lot of the information that we've been working on. Now, obviously, we can't start spending money until twenty twenty three because the money's not available until twenty twenty three. Meridian is built on a landfill, and one of the issues with the landfill is we can't dig into the landfill. Uh, so what we can do and what we're planning on doing is building mounds, and those mounds could have trees and other shade structures. So that's part of the plan that we are, are going to be putting in there. We shared that with Del Goder. We have put that out, um, I think, uh, with um, uh, Councilmember Bollard as well, and uh, that's what we're going to do. Uh, it's going to happen but not until 2023. I don't get the funding until 2023. So that's kind of the idea for that. Uh, you're always welcome to do fundraising. And as long as you share with us when and how and what, uh, we can support you on fundraising and we can do some other things as well. Um, one of the things over at Meridian, there is some um, logistics in regards to if we were gonna actually put water features in place, uh, we have to address the whole issue with the um, the landfill. It's not as easy as it would be at other parks. So uh, something to think about, and you were talking about doing something easy and quick. Uh, that's what we want to do over at Meridian is put some shade, shade structures in there and put some support equipment in there as well. So uh, we do work with the Humane Society. Uh, they are actually responsible for the day-to-day -day maintenance of that dog park. Um, and we can remind them and ask them if they need supplies or other kind of support and we will work with them on that to make sure that there's enough uh, dog bags in place. So hopefully that answers most of your questions or some of your questions, but I just wanted to make sure that you know that there is a plan. It's gonna be executed, uh, but it's not gonna happen until 2023. Okay, so if we were like able to do something like a pop-up or something of those things, is there a way that we just set that money aside so it starts in 2023 or you know to wait or are you preferring us to wait until 2023 or you can fundraise whenever you want um we'll take money that that's never that's never a concern or a question we just would like to work with you on that and so let us know when how and and why uh, we can come up with a lot of different ways of securing those funds if there's a certain project we can take that donation and put it in our financial accounts and earmark it specifically for a certain activity. Another way we can do that is take it through the Park Foundation. Now, the Park Foundation is a 501c3 that does a lot of fundraising for us on a lot of different areas. And we can also do the same thing, put it in their account and uh, earmark it for a certain project. So there's a couple different ways we can do that. Um, it just depends on how you want to do it, what the, what the fundraising projects are, the time frame you want to do that. Um, we just need to sit down and, and put a plan together. Who do I contact? I know I contact Dale, but mm -hmm. I don't. Never da mind. David McGuire, um, he's on vacation this week. McGuire? Um, McGuire. Like Jerry McGuire? Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Show me the money. <laughs> Show yeah. me the money, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> and my other thing is out of the park, uh, the one that's closest to the road, 
out in the middle. I don't know if there's a pipe leak or anything about water, and that's the reason why one of the water things came to mind is that mm -hmm. it's always drenched out there in that area. That's why I thought if there is some way up there to make that more of a water place, because it's always that's where the dogs like to go out and play in the water when it, you know. So the issue with time. that is, is drainage, and every time it rains, we create a, a pond, and that's one of the other items that David's going to address hopefully with uh, this funding that we have. We're looking at $300,000. That could go a long ways in addressing a lot of... Is, that, is it just for Meridian or is that for other parks too? Well, being that we have only a few dog parks and being that we have a lot of issues at Meridian, okay. I would gather that almost all of this is gonna go towards those issues. That's the priority that we want to address. So. I guess part of my question is that is if I could find people who would donate some of their interest and time, wouldn't that mm -hmm. cut back some of the money that so other money can help out other dogs? That, that would be a really good strategic plan and, and for us as well. Or it could be uh, the items that are just out of reach. Maybe there might be some items that, that we could get for Meridian. Um, when David gets back next week, um, I think I'm going to get your information. Penny is going to get your information, and we'll make sure that uh, you and David connect. Thank you. That would be mm -hmm. that would be great, and because I'm probably one of the big speakers out there regarding this, because I want to do a memorial area so I can, because my dog was killed, and uh, the one that was there, but I have two other brats. And I juicy brats. <laughs> Ms. Fleming, one second. Do we have any other questions for our speaker? Just wanted to check in with the. Well, the commissioners. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Next speaker, Gary Ferris. I'm on the agenda. Okay. Oh, excuse me. I'm sorry. Yes, they're all on the Everybody else is on the agenda? Okay. Well, we'll get to you later. Okay, then we'll just go ahead and move on. Uh, we have to approve the minutes from our meetings. Did everybody have a chance to review the minutes? Do you want to have any questions or comments on the minutes? Then I will entertain a motion to approve the minutes. So moved. I will second that. Uh, all those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed, the ayes have it. Uh, moving forward, let's move on to new items for consideration. Troy? So we have an item on the agenda. It's in regards to the Hyatt uh, hotel and it's adjacent to some of our parkland. Um, Paul Gunzelman is going to share some information. We also have some uh, folks from the architect firm that's going to be doing some work on this and they're going to share some information as well. And during that time I'll also answer questions or interject with other details. Great. Thank you Troy. I'm Paul Gunzelman with uh, engineering. Um, I've been working a little bit with this, um, with uh, John Fieldberg, with our property management folks and other staff in the city. Um, Greg Tice from SPT Architecture had reached out to the city on behalf of the Hyatt, um, inquiring about um, approximately 14,500 square feet of land um, to accommodate, um, just north of the Hyatt, to accommodate possible expansion. We did have the property appraised and the higher ownership is agreeable to pay in fair market value for the, the uh, additional land. We have also worked with uh, Public Works stormwater staff as this is adjacent to the river and um, from the concepts that we have seen, the proposal has no impact to the floodway. So with that, I will turn it over to either Gina Loomis or Dustin Marsh to go over the project a little bit further. Good afternoon. Um, I'm Gina Loomis with SPT Architecture. I've got Dustin Marsh here with me as well. And um, as Paul alluded to, we're just wanting to educate you guys on the piece of property um, that the Hyatt Properties would like to um, obtain. And if I can just skip to this um, next image here. Um, basically, um, what we're looking at is an area of the property to the north and a little bit to the west um, that the Hyatt would like to go ahead and purchase 
uh, to for pot potential expansion um, of the Hyatt, um, which would in potentially increase revenues for the city of Wichita and um, also clean up an area of the park. As you can see on this earlier sheet, um, these are actually um, three. Uh, three images that show um, the landscape that there that's there right now and you can see that there's a number of there's at least six dead trees kind of in that area right now where we're we're looking at proposing um, to purchase um, the area is also basically almost inaccessible by any other um, land use uh, it is contained between uh, the storm, or storm sewer, the river bank, as well as the dumpster for the Hyatt and then the Hyatt Convention Center. So I'll let Dustin talk a little bit about kind of the constraints of that property that you see here. Right, and I think this, this picture here, um, 3D kind of helps us bring this to life and just to kind of follow up on Gina's point, just exactly how um, unusable really this this piece of ground would be to anyone else other than the Hyatt, which really benefits um, this project, but also really, I think, helps activate the river corridor with with development and activity. Um, the the flood constraints, you know, for the earlier comment, we're, we're out of the floodway line. Um, that that line that we're kind of the proposed acquisition line, that, that follows right along um, the existing floodway. And then there's an existing storm sewer. Sorry, I'm gonna reach back across here. So this survey was done and, and the storm sewer that Gina had alluded to was right here. So we're, we're uh, kind of out of the way of any major impactful infrastructure or, or, um, or flood concerns. Um, we're really excited about this opportunity. And, and I know that, you know, that seems based on this graphic that seems like quite a bit of area but it's really it's really kind of a postage stamp out there it's it's not a, it's not a very big area at all and with the drought that we are experiencing and in, in the summer heat you know to Gina's point that that area um, is really struggling in terms of the vegetation the existing vegetation that that is there so uh, with that kind of quick overview I'd love to answer any questions or Troy if there's anything you think we might have left out one other thing I'd like to mention is that the, the money that, that we are proposing being paid towards the purchase of the property, um, we would like to see reallocated um, towards the improvements along that riverbank area um, between Douglas and Waterman. So, um, you know, the, the purchase sale of that property would go back towards the improvements of that same area. What's the square footage of the property? It is. It doesn't have to be about exact. 14, just, yeah, 14, it's, it's okay. fourteen thousand five hundred yeah. ish, plus or minus. City owns this property now. Yes, the city owns this property, and um, I'll just jump right in. Staff has had a chance to review this, both uh, public works, park staff as well, and we're supportive of this. A lot of times, we don't like to sell park property. But they're absolutely correct that this is a piece of property that is not being used. Um, actually, we will alleviate some of our maintenance, uh, so we won't have to take care of trees, and there will be some space that we don't have to mow. It's not huge. Um, but there's an opportunity for the hotel to grow. And with that opportunity for the hotel to grow, that means um, more tourism, more dollars, and some different ways of coming back to the city. And uh, they're absolutely correct. One of the things that we always ask for is when we sell, whether it's parkland that's owned by the Board of Park Commissioners or parkland that is owned and operated by the city, is that those proceeds go back to the park. And with uh, the, uh, uh, the new items that we want to put in this park, and, and uh, Price Woodard, we're looking at, I think we put a million dollars this next year to make some park improvements. This could be upwards to over two hundred thousand dollars that could go back into that project as well. On top so, of the million. Yes, on top of the million, on top, and also on top of some art dollars as well. So, um, so with that, uh, from from the Park and Recreation Department, we are supportive of this endeavor. Um, again, I think it becomes a win-win. Uh, we do lose some parkland, but it's not a piece of parkland that we use. Um, very much at all for any kind of recreational activity. And we still have 
a lot of buffer space uh, to the hotel as well. Further questions? How many trees will be taken out? Um, I'm not sure the exact number. Um, if we go back onto this, yeah. you can see. Yeah, this is a little bit better look. And, and this is obviously taken from Google at, at uh, you know, the growing season at some point. Uh, but, I mean, there's, there's probably 15 trees there, and I would say... You know, by the looks of it, we've got a lot of evergreens that have got disease that need to go. Yes. So when I was, I was actually over there, walked the space this morning just to kind of give myself a little refresher. And um, at least six of the evergreens in that area are, are dead. And the disease, the same disease, there's about at least seven more evergreens kind of in that area that are starting to catch on that same disease. So um, I think once you lose those, you're, you're talking just a, a small handful of, of trees that we would lose. I'd imagine there would be some landscape improvements that go on. Yeah, and, and that's the point of, uh, you know, the proposition is, is is stating that that money would go back to, towards re-landscaping that same area and putting it, reinvesting the money back into, into the area. Yeah, I, uh, it, one thing that you said really caught my mind, and that was the how we were talking about how hot it was. And, and I just wanted to be clear. I think this sounds like a really, I love the idea of investing and further expanding uh, the footprint of the Hyatt. I think it's, it's absolutely what needs to be having, happening. But uh, I would be much more inclined to be supportive if built into the plan is what is the replacement for these mature trees uh, and not just donations you know, in like the sale purchase to the park. I think that's great and we do need to have that. But what other mitigating factors can we have? That's why we are working on a tree policy. So if we're gonna be, you know, having these kind of transactions, this is specifically the kind of thing that when we're looking at these deals, that's, I really appreciate the question of how many trees are we gonna lose? We need to know. And built into, baked into the plan needs to be an excellent solution to that question. And, and not just Price Woodard Park. I mean, into the new plan would be, I think, for, that's what I hear from people when we talk about development, especially along our riverfront. We cannot ignore that. So that's my one comment. I, I think this is, again, fantastic, but just looking down the road, uh, that's uh, the, the caution I would give. But awesome to hear that there's, there's the, the energy for this. I'm, I'm supportive of that energy. So thank you. Troy, I have a question more for you. Um, so I know there's a lot of, obviously, been a lot of talks and discussions around a master plan along the river and stuff like that and eventually there's my understanding going to be a bridge that's built that connects both sides i i like this idea of reinvesting to enhance a price water park but if we do this and then two years down the road when somebody's trying to build this bridge are we going to lose more parkland for that as well or have we thought through like, how does this fit into that? And it might not, right? But I just wanna, I don't wanna get in, I know we're not in the business of selling parkland for the sake of selling parkland, but. So in regards to the specific parkland that's being sold, that's not gonna have an impact on the proposed idea. It's just right. an idea of where yeah. the bridge is gonna go. It's not gonna have an impact whatsoever. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> whether the bridge was gonna be in place um, now or later, uh, there's still going to be some abutments that, if it does happen, um, that's going to have an impact on uh, the, the shore of the river as well as um, the walkway. It has to go right. underneath it or around it somehow. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't seen any designs because I don't think any designs have really been developed yet, uh, but those are all things to consider in the future. Yeah. Um, uh, what Chris is talking about in regards to trees, um, the sell price is $15 a square foot, uh, and, and I can. This is something that I would suggest: is is since we're going to be losing um, half a dozen trees, that maybe that be considered as well as uh, replacement of those um, at this location nearby. So that that might be something that can cool. sweeten the pot a little there bit. There you go. Um, I like that. Um, I think that answers all your questions, Alejo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I just want to make sure that we don't get in. I mean, A Price Woodard Park is, I mean, an important park and a significant park in the area, and I just don't want to cut it down to where it's just a sliver in the future. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Well, I think this is not going to have the, that type of impact whatsoever. Um, 
And then when we make some improvements, like I mentioned, we have a million dollars in the budget. Um, and if we can add some more dollars to this, whether it's landscaping near or around this area, it's still attached to the park. Mm -hmm. The idea of um, the enhancements to the park is in regards to ideas for the, um, uh, the lunch counter that had been removed from Chester I. Lewis, can go back in this location. Uh, there were some other ideas in regards to working with the NAACP on um, ideas for... Uh, so we could use this 200 for any of those enhancements, is what you're saying? Correct. Like if we want to get a statue or something of A-Price Wooders or something like that? Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I, for our architect friends, so once this land is sold, how quickly do you imagine you're going to start cutting trees and building stuff? Um, we haven't put together a plan of what that. We, we are working on plans for what the expansion of this Hyatt could look like and how much square footage we can fit on there. Obviously, I mean, the Hyatt obviously goes vertical, and sure. so we can get a lot of square footage in a small amount of space, unlike anything else we could put there. So um, we are exploring those, but we've got, you know, a few years that, you know, we're, we've got plans in place that we're looking at, um, just still exploring the options, not knowing whether or not we can get the property. So... Assuming um, it's, you it's, yeah, it's right. all <laughs> right, right. That's why we're here. It's hinging on getting So the if you do get the property, do you imagine there's going to be a lot of disruption to the rest of the park? Yeah. Um, certainly, you know, there's enough land, I think, around there, around the perimeter and on the back side, um, far, further on the, the, the east side of the property here, back here, that, that most of the construction and everything would take place back here. And no, there wouldn't be any other disruptions to the park itself. So Alejo, that was one of the questions we asked. We wanted to make sure that uh, the river bank and the walkway was not going to be impacted. And so she's exactly right that the space behind there, there's a lot of um, driveway space. Yeah. Uh, you can see that there's already some other space that has access to other mechanical areas. Uh, that could all be staging for um, this building. So Detroit, who owns that piece of grass right behind the red? This right here? Yeah. yeah. Um, do, do we got that? Yeah. I think that's still city property. Yeah, that is. Yeah. Is there a reason why you guys didn't want to buy that as well? Because at this point, it's just separated from the rest of the park. Well, actually, I'm going to take this real yeah, quick. Go ahead. So we had this survey done. Um, th this is kind of a unique property line. You can see our property yeah. kind of goes up here and right. then wants to do this well, and eventually kind of follows the roof line of the Hyatt. So this is actually Hyatt property. Yeah, oh, yeah, that green square is yours. Okay. Um, and so this... That was incorrect. Th okay. This no, area good. here is, is, is City of Wichita property. Everything okay. kind of west and north of here. Okay, thank you. Um, I just want to make sure we weren't breaking up. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's really unique. It's a good question because it does jog around there quite a few different angles and bearings. And y'all are sure this is the only land you're gonna you're not gonna come back in like two months and be like, hey, we need another thousand feet. Well, so there is to what was alluded to earlier is there's a stormwater. Uh, yeah, it's a 60 inch pipe there, and yeah. uh, we want to be respectful of that. I mean, we're gonna have footings that go into the ground that are you know pretty major, and so you know not to put too fine a point on it, but we don't want to screw that that up and so we're going to stay away from it as yeah. close as we feel like we can get is where we are all the way to the floodway line you know staying out of that as well um, and so that's that's about as much as we could ask for so that's okay. that's where we're at and we we've, we've drawn up preliminary plans that that fit this um, this red outline here and the reason for just taking it across the face of this um, down here to the south is potential of you know trying to tie into the whole riverfront parkway area, the development across there, um, the Ruffins would like to create a cafe, a, a restaurant sure. that would be more accessible to the public mm -hmm. um, off that river corridor in front. And in fact, Chris would love to see a, a boat dock out there that people could come off the dock and come up and have you know food right off of a restaurant right there. So um, they've got a cafe in the facility now. And so what would that look like, expanding that? So just drawing more pedestrian traffic across there. Um, he's also looked at an ICT, a large ICT 
um, sculpture, if you will, that would go out front. You know, if you've been to Oklahoma City, have you seen the big OKC letters that people like to photograph and be front, you know, and do Instagram posts with? Um, so again, some like you had alluded to, kind of an art feature, if you will, across there. Um, and so he definitely wants to develop the, the face of that as well to tie into the whole riverbank front. One comment that I would like to make, and, and this is for future use, um, have to be really careful about building into the river because mm -hmm. uh, then it could really impact a lot of different things that we could do in there, such as uh, joke, uh, jet boat or racing uh, jet skis, um, have an impact on the, the crew team as well with WSU. So although we really want to see things go into the river, we got to be yeah. mindful about yeah. all yeah. the activities that you rely on the space the as well. On the river? I'm sorry? We're not going to build a pool on the river? <laughs> probably. <laughs> probably going to do that. Listen. If it's a rooftop pool. <laughs> listen. Or a casino. I don't know if that's even legal, but listen. That's yeah. Ruffin has got, got some experience in that. Fuck them here. Lane, man. Maybe so. That's true. Anyhow, okay. Well, thank you so much. Anybody else have any other questions for our speakers today? So, Are you all um, open to the idea of the $15 plus the the cost of replacing those trees in the park or in the park system? Um, I definitely think we can be open to it. We're not um, at the obligation to be able to okay. see whether or not we can or not, but we can take that back to them. I mean, I'm sure that would not be. I would want to make sure that that $217,440 goes to the enhancement of the park. And I don't know how many more trees we can plant in that space already. And so I just want to make sure that the, if those dollars truly are staying, that they stay in the park, but that that those trees get replaced in some other form or fashion in the park system itself. If you guys could put that in a form of yep. a motion, and I'll take that recommendation uh, mm -hmm. uh, through our staff, and, and when we get to council, we'll make sure that council knows about that request. Would you like to make that motion? Unless anyone has questions. Oh, it's within your district, is it? Mm -hmm. not? Yes. So. Yeah. No more questions. No. Okay. Well, I would move. I would make a motion that we sell the proposed land for the fifteen dollars an acre plus the cost of replacing the trees that are being cut down uh, somewhere within the Wichita Park system. Wait, this is a motion to sell the land. I can make a recommendation to sell the land. Is that, the rec or is that how we're doing it, Troy? A I, recommendation well, to sell. I don't know if I'm ready to make or that. How do we? How are we? How do we? Yeah, real quick. Um, so this is city property. Let's it's get, not yeah. park board okay. property. So the authority here is approval and consent of okay. the park board is needed for then city council to take a step mm -hmm. on okay. selling the property. I mean, I, I would just say this before, like, and and we can have more discussion on it. I mean, I I generally support the idea. I really do. But I would like to hear what the response is, mm -hmm. and I would rather not cast a vote saying necessarily, like, I'm fully on board without, I mean, like, this is the first time hearing of it. Okay. I and mean, that's, that's just, I mean, listen, I, I'm, I'm happy to let that motion stand, and if somebody wanted to second and vote, well, but that's just Well, I think I need to restate I, it, because I'm not approving the sale. I'm making a recommendation. Well, right. Well, and that how should, the, how should the motion read? Uh, well, the motion was for a motion for sale, and that was going to be uh, my suggestion, that we make it a motion to approve and consent to the proposal to sell land to Hyatt. A motion to consent. Because the city... With your condition then included at the end as well. Okay. Or do we want to wait till month, next month to make sure we have... Yeah. There, that, that way, if there's any kind of um, disagreement from the community, yeah. it can be so, so said there. And, I mean, and we could we could post that like on our social channels. I think that's an opportunity. Like I just think that whenever we have a question about public land, and we just go right into it, I know that there's we're gonna wish that we'd taken some time. So I would make the recommendation to take a little time, take a take a pause. Again, I support the concept. I'm supportive in concept. I think it might be it might be prudent sure. to to take some advisement and and possibly. I don't, I don't know how to how to circle that square. Does that make sense? Or are we just saying yeah, maybe hear from the community? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Community yeah. feedback. Okay. So can we just okay take a pause that. for yeah. this right now? Then? I will, I, if that's yeah, and that'll let y'all talk about the trees. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we like I say, I, I don't see. Um, I mean, the intent was to put the yeah. whole two hundred nine thousand back into development at the utilization. We've already worked up some potential landscape plans to see yeah. what that could look like. Um, what uh, when when is the city council going to look at this, Troy? Because that's, uh, that's the hang-up. Paul, I, you know when that? 
I, I don't know the answer to that. This was a first step, okay. um, and then it would go to city council. Yeah. So I, I don't have that time frame, but this was a first step. So they won't see this then till November, possibly. I, I don't know. Okay. Um, but what you guys are doing is tip, typically what we've been doing is introducing the topic, okay. uh, waiting a month, and actually voting on it. Um, the, I'm not sure when it goes to council. And again, this is seeking your recommendation. Yeah. Uh, council doesn't need to have your recommendation. Yeah. Um, I think uh, it just depends on timing, sure. and we'll work to see if we can make this yeah. decision or this discussion happen before we go to council. I'm okay. So that's with all me. I can promise is that yeah. we'll try to make that happen. So okay. is, is the concern just about the, the, tree, the trees? The trees we're the, we're losing, or the it's. I think it's more getting the public feedback. Yeah. Because we just it's an agenda item. Yeah, it's I, a new I mean, agenda item that just got introduced, but just certainly for you to know, like the motion is going to include the from my end a um, in addition to the fifteen dollars of the replacement of those trees somewhere in the park system because there certainly isn't space in that current park to replace those trees. Right. So yeah, um, to Gina's point, I mean any any dollar investment in, in where this you know this land transaction goes would would go back into the improvements right um, but the public's gonna be there's gonna be questions about you're cutting down 15 trees how are you gonna how are you gonna sure. bring them back sure and how whether they're dead or not the city on, sees on a, you know green trees 30 year old tree I understand oh, I just want you guys to feel comfortable that you know we we don't expect to leave it slashed and burned either uh, we want to make it nice but but you know we want to we want to make sure that that we're yeah providing uh, the aesthetic and the functionality and and everything that needs to happen yeah. to, to I'm sure the hotel's gonna look beautiful and the question is gonna be like how do we how do we replenish we're all I mean we've been dealing with trees and getting trees getting cut down in parks for a while now and so that's a conversation that I know we're gonna have pushback on um, from the public is how are we replacing replacing those trees and I just I've, I know the park I don't know where you're gonna plant 15 new trees in that park well like I say there's at least six or more of them that are that are already dead that are in the, the landscape around there but those are the ones that are gonna get, get cut down right yeah yeah that's what I'm saying like but to the public like when we look at them we still just see trees like we don't see a rotting tree right so if we said I'm just trying to tell you what the what the what the feedback is going to be from the community is. You're cutting down 15 trees or dozen trees or whatever it is. The, where are we going to plant them again? Th this is this is something that I hear about more. I mean, just just the reason that you're getting this reaction is because this is something as a park board member I hear about more than anything is they are cutting down our trees and they're not replacing them. And my concern is like I like I know that's not the intention yeah. to get out ahead of that. Like, let's just take a pause. Let's hear from the public on this and say, let's, let's come back to the table. And, and, and sorry, Philip, do you have, I, go ahead. No, I was just gonna say that the, the feedback we keep getting is about cautious advisement. Right. Um, they don't want us to make a, 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 give an advisement to the council without some f thought, right? And thought yeah. is we bring it, we discuss it, we come back the next time. We've had time to discuss it. Um, advisory boards look at it, come back to us with things, neighborhood committees, whatever else it may be. Because um, it's been betrayed by some people that we don't take cautious advice, mm -hmm. and that's not the case at all. So I mean, for other decisions, we've had three or four meetings over it. Yep. So I think it's just that that's really what it comes down to is that we're it's going to be seen as oh we do, we just rubber stamp whatever Troy brings to us, and that's not the case at all, right? It's about a partnership we back and forth about yep. things. So we make sure we look at the big picture, and so. So so just to put it in dollar amount, that it's about two hundred and ten thousand dollars. Yes that would be going back towards the park commission um, for the sale of this land to, you know, beautify that area. So I think that, I just, I do feel like that's a substantial amount of money. You were just talking earlier about $300,000 for the dog parks. Mm -hmm. You know, I think, yes. you know, $210,000 to improve that Price Woodward Park area and the riverbank is a substantial amount of money that I think the city would, could do a lot with and and, and a few trees in addition to that. A hundred percent. And I hope you know, like, I am in favor of this. Like, I think this is an awesome plan and an awesome idea. Um, and certainly we want to use that 210 to enhance the park, right? But again, like, so, the question is going to be from the public. You cut down 
these trees, what are you doing to bring them back? So hey. I, I have a question then, and I maybe I should know the answer to this, but um, if you guys filled those questions, is there does the city have a plan for someone who wanted to donate six 10-inch uh, caliper Schumard oaks to go in a park? Do you, does, it, does this board have a plan in place to say, okay, the Hyatt Hotel just sold for this, but we're going to require six, 12 trees to get put in? <laughs> you can't come. I mean, like if no. I'm the client, I'm saying, well, okay, I, I'd love to put them in. We don't have room here. Where do you want them to go? Yeah. What's the answer to that one? Troy. <laughs> I'm not sure I understand what you're asking. Yeah, well, I, I, sorry, not to give you a hard time. I think really we've been in discussions about a tree policy for quite some time, and I think we're going to be getting there. We're getting updates on this. We actually just, Troy and I actually just discussed this. Um, that's a great question. I just it's, a, it's a valid question. We don't question. have an answer for you where we're going to put them on our site because it yeah. is small and we're going to be putting a lot of building on it yeah. yeah but we are gonna the same vernacular that has been followed with native grasses and and hardy plant material that has this happened along this river corridor already will you will continue to see that same material yeah. palette grow and that's a good thing i think for maintenance and for aesthetic and everything but if we don't have room to put you know a lot of trees that right. we're cutting down and we want to yeah where we need to know where they need to go with you know not on our property or wherever if they can't fit here so my, yeah, that was concur. my question is like a mitigation bank set up or or what well, so a couple of things if you don't mind go ahead okay so as far as replacement of the trees and, and, and alejo uh, alluded to this whatever the sale is that value could be added into it so maybe there's 12 trees we look at the caliber inch of those trees and we could come up with a, ca a calculation for that. I don't, what the, I don't know what that is off the top of my head, but I think in good faith that's an idea of enhancing the park. That would be part of just sweetening the pot. Um, and, and to your question, do we know exactly where those are gonna go? No, but what we can tell the public is right. that they're gonna be replaced in the park somehow, system. someplace, somewhere. The other th item, I, and we've always talked about this, is that anytime we sell park property, whether it's owned by the, um, the uh, uh, city of, of Wichita, Parks and Recreation Department, or own, owned by the commission, that that money always goes back into the park. So that's nothing that's new, but that's something that we always ask and put into our yep. motions as well. Lastly, um, and, and I'm kind of speaking for the commission, commission on this, is that I think we're trying to work a little bit more on transparency. And I think uh, instead of making a decision today, uh, I think they want to take this information, digest it, make sure that there's no more questions, sure. and then come back next month and make a decision uh, as far as a recommendation moving forward. That way, they can uh, let the folks in their districts know that they are analyzing this, reviewing this, understanding this, um, that it just didn't come today without uh, some further discussion. Because when we leave here, people are going to watch this. We're all watching it now. And by the time the evening's over with, I can't speak for everybody else, we'll probably get three phone calls and three emails. Yes. I mean, I also, yep. So um, either I agree or I disagree or one of those things. We're, we're, we'll, we'll hear about it. So, um, And I hope you know, like, this is something that I think is great, right? We'll, we'll be able to, it's a space that we'll be able to enhance and really highlight and, and show and tell the story of a price water and if you don't know who he is i encourage you to look him up but it's a pretty uh he's a pretty important figure in our community and um, this park should be one of the jewels um, in our system so the fact that we'll be able to invest another two hundred thousand um, dollars into it is something great and it's not that we're trying to be a thorn on your side it's just no, that's fine. I... this is what we do yeah. <laughs> Gina, this isn't an overly time-sensitive matter, I would assume. I, I think I know the answer to this question, but you guys aren't looking to mobilize construction next month. No. You can wait a month and yeah. let us kind of gather yeah. feedback. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we'll come back next month. It'll be on the continuation of prior okay. business. Super appreciate it. Th thank you. I mean, l listen, I mean, I'll, I'll just say for my piece, this is, it's going to be a little uncomfortable because frankly, we've yeah. never really had these discussions, but these are discussions people have been wanting to have. Yeah. And we don't really know what they look like yet, and we don't know what the result's going to be, but I, I echo uh, Cabral's statement that it's going to be great. Whatever is done down there is going to be great, and you're going to make us proud. And we just want to make certain that we are representing 
uh, what folks out there are telling us. So can't wait to see what happens because it's going to be awesome. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Okay. Tim? The easy stuff. We're up next with uh, Tim Kellams, who's going to say he's down with CIP. So Tim, um, he's got a lot to share because we got a lot going on. Nice. There's a lot of things that uh, are on last year's CIP that we still have to finish off and give updates on. And then there's a lot <laughs> in the coming year. So um, we're putting a strategy together to try to make sure that we get everything taken care of. Um, we want to make sure that all of our projects are executed at a high level of quality as well as on time. So Tim is going to share a lot of that information now. Hello. Uh, good afternoon. Tim Collins, uh, Public Works and Utilities Engineering. Um, I guess for, for those, um, the commissioners have a printout. This is exactly what I'm going to show you. It's just an internal version, and it's just highlighted so I can be a little bit more efficient in my presentation. Um, so everything that I'm going to show you is exactly what the commissioners uh, are receiving, uh, aside from just where uh, some files are located in this spreadsheet. Um, so you can, in a few clicks here, you can see what the, um, the CIP information and projects are uh, going on in the park system. Um, so you can go to, this is on the city's website, you'll go to get information, parks and recreation, or park and recreation, about us, and then you navigate down to the capital improvement program. And you scroll down, and you'll see um, that there are uh, five different categories for projects. Uh, and this is just a way for the public to see where we are uh, with some of the projects uh, that have been improved in previous CIP uh, um, uh, documents. Um, so scrolling down the list here, this uh, is kind of a long list, so please bear with me, but um, I'll just go through, um, I guess briefly go over the different steps before I get into this. Uh, so identified is basically a, uh, a project that is in an approved CIP, but we have not initiated it. So what that means is that we have not gone to council to initiate the money to begin that project. Uh, we haven't. Uh, really explain to them exactly the, the ins and outs, exactly what it's supposed to be used for and then approved by City Council. Um, so once it has been initiated, uh, it'll sit in this initiated uh, uh, category. Uh, once it gets into design, either in-house or um, by a consultant, it'll move into scheduled. And once it's in progress, uh, in terms of basically in construction, uh, it moves into the in-progress um, category, and then once it's completed, it goes to completed. Um, so pretty straightforward, um, and uh, you'll see kind of the ins and outs and how things uh, shift between as I uh, explain some of these projects here. Um, and again, for the um, commissioners, I have highlighted a couple of the projects, and I'll be mentioning these to you. They're highlighted in red in your document here. Those are the ones that have uh, changed or have been added. So uh, if you have your old sheet, uh, when you get back home, uh, you can, can compare these two. Uh, let's see here. So going into the, I guess as a reminder, this is a quarterly update. So I will be back again in December, December 12th. I'll be back again to uh, talk to you about these. And I have a feeling that we'll, um, have a little bit more information on the identified items at that time because we'll be gearing up to initiate the items in early uh, 2023. So you'll see in some of these locations uh, like TBD or contract to be or contractor to be determined, and that's um, just because we haven't initiated the project yet, and we're you know kind of getting all of our ducks in a row uh, before we initiate. Um, so I won't go through all of these. Uh, some of them have been sitting here for, uh, for a while. Either that's due to um, waiting for more funding or, uh, again, getting our ducks in a row. 
Uh, so I'll hit on some of the key items here, and uh, let's see if we can minimize this a little bit so we can see a little bit more here. All right. So one of the one of the items in the 2023 CIP is the uh, athletic field renovation. Uh, we have some we are ongoing and talking about exactly what we're using that for, uh, but we will I'll get into that more in December uh, once we have things nailed down um, for that one. But that uh, will be initiated in early next year. Uh, same with athletic courts. That's still we're using our our tools. Uh, to identify um, really what are the courts that need uh, repair or need to be replaced. Uh, so again, that's for next year, which we don't intend to, in, in to uh, excuse me, initiate until the beginning of next year. Um, again, as Troy had mentioned earlier, there's uh, $300,000 for dog parks for next year, which we're looking forward to getting that one going. Um, again, another thing for next year is the uh, irrigation systems, which is uh, important, um, trying to figure out exactly where does that need to go, where are we going to get our bang for our buck for our systems, and I'm surprised to know how many different irrigation systems that we have, uh, so this is a, a critical piece for us. Uh, next is 2023 park facility enhancements. Uh, this one is one that we use quite a bit uh, to achieve different items that don't really fit into other categories, for example, uh, if it's if it's not a court or athletic field, or uh, you know an irrigation system, these are this park facility fund uh, was what was used for. Um, uh, let's see, um, we're going to be working on NASCAR turf that will come out of a park facility enhancement fund. So just to give an example on uh, what it's for, um, the next one is park facility maintenance, and this one is also really important to help us maintain our, uh, our facilities, make sure that they're working properly. Uh, one important thing is safety with this one. Uh, 2023 playground rehabil rehabilitation and development. Uh, as we get down through the list, it's kind of interesting because you can start to see the 2022 projects kind of move down, and then you'll have the 23 kind of follow suit. Um, so pay attention to that as you flip through here. Uh, Country Acres Dog Park is another one uh, for next year, which is uh, exciting for us. Um, again, this one will be initiated early next year, so don't have a contractor on board for that one. Uh, but when we get through the process, you'll see this project moving down. Uh, Finley Ross Park is another exciting urban project, uh, urban park that we'll be working on next year. Now, uh, this next one, LW CLAP Master Plan Implementation, that one uh, is very important for us, and that is one that we are looking into getting initiated early. And one of the reasons for initiating it early is due to the, uh, the bridges there. The bridges are not in great shape, and so we're utilizing some of this funding to help make those repairs, uh, the study, the engineering for that. Uh, so we're taking a deep dive into the bridges to make sure that we are uh, addressing it in the right manner and doing it in a way that is respectful to the park, uh, but also meeting the needs for the master plan. Uh, so you can see here, that's going we're looking to get that initiated in fall in this fall. Um, so that's one thing that is a little bit different. And one of the reasons for this is that most of this money is for a CIP for next year. Uh, but in some cases uh, that are really critical or if there's design, we can initiate them early. Usually we don't initiate all of the funding. So as you'll see here, there's over two and a half million dollars. Uh, we do not intend to initiate all of that because that's meant to be for another year, uh, for next year. So we will uh, mostly go into get this, trying to keep the safety at the forefront and trying to address those bridges. Uh, park lighting and security improvements, as most of you know, there have been um, some um, vandalism to our parks. Uh, this is another one that will be going early, as you'll see fall 2022 here, uh, to help make sure our, park is, our parks are safe. Uh, park wetlands. Uh, this one we are also looking at initiating early, and this is just for the design for this. Um, this is going to be for phase three 
for the boardwalks out there, which is, if you haven't been out there, it's really such a great park. Uh, I'm looking forward to working on this, to getting the next phase complete. Um, so trying to get the design done early so that we can get con starting construction um, next year. So design stuff is great to do in the winter time. Uh, it's hard to do construction at times due to the, due to the weather. You can design inside, you can go outside, you know, you can look at photos, you can go outside and take, you know, do drive-bys and walk and everything, but you don't have to do construction when the, the ground is frozen and everything. So doing design work in the fall and winter is, uh, is a great use of time. Um, so moving on, uh, one thing that you'll see here is South Lake's improvement. Uh, the construction, again, we had initiated $300,000 earlier, and you'll see that later on the list. Uh, and those of you following at home, if you're on this website, you'll see that the design portion of this is further down the list. I believe it's in the schedule because it's under design right now. Uh, so we have not initiated the full amount of money for this project. We are waiting on that until we um, are ready to go in, into construction with that. Uh, Watson Park, this is a new one that has been added, uh, like many of the other ones. So when the CIP was approved, this is kind of where all these uh, projects got added in. Uh, so that's why this uh, identified as a bit heavy. So Watson Park, uh, continuing with the master plan there. Uh, the master plan was done and approved uh, many years ago, and this is uh, working through the next phase of that project in that park. Um, so lots of projects coming up, uh, very exciting uh, for the city of Wichita for these different uh, items. Uh, initiated, as you can see here, initiated before, uh, has got quite a bit smaller um, because they have moved into schedule, which is kind of how, you know, how the project is supposed to work here. So uh, initiated really small, and so nothing new here on the 2020 um, walking paths and exercise system. And, and again, one of the reasons why it's here sitting and initiated is because we are waiting uh, federal approval um, for a grant for that. So um, it's taken them quite a while at the federal level, um, but we're, if it's at the federal level, that's great news for us because that uh, means it's passed a few of the uh, gates. Um, so moving into scheduled here, I will there's still quite a bit of projects. So I'll mostly hit on some of the, the main ones that have moved or changed here. Um, let's see. So I believe Ailey and Meadows, these have changed here. Um, we went through a solicitation, uh, excuse me, uh, RFP for these uh, projects for Ailey and Meadows Playground. And you'll see that they have been awarded to uh, the diff different vendors for those, um, and those should be getting done here in the fall or late winter, or or this time, or excuse me, some time this year. Um, really just kind of depends. The, the designs are a little different, so we'll see exactly when those get going. Some of that is delayed due to procurement uh, for the materials, but um, still playing on this year. Uh, let's see. Uh, I believe this one has changed since last time I was here in June. Uh, South Lake Parks, uh, South Lakes Park improvements. This is the Pickleplex uh, in design now, so that's in schedule, and I'll stay there for a little bit before moving into uh, in progress, which will happen early next year. Uh, let's see. Moving on. Um, in progress, not much has changed uh, in progress because it, you know, sometimes construction takes a little while. Um, but one of the things that I would like to point out here is that you'll see uh, for the commissioners, it's highlighted in red at the top, uh, Chester I. Lewis art. So that was uh, to increase the scope and quality of materials at Chester I. Lewis. That was approved um, back in August uh, by city council. Um, so that worked a little bit differently because it went immediately from uh, identified, which is in the approved CIP uh, for next year, it immediately went into in progress because that is ongoing. So it jumped a, uh, ahead and was expedited to in progress, uh, mostly to expand an already existing contract. Um, so you can see that is kind of tied here with the Chester I. Lewis Park improvements right below it. Um, 
So moving into completed, um, this is kind of where things start to get, uh, you know, really exciting because the public gets to start using it. Uh, Striker Sports Complex Phase 8, that is substantially complete. So it's not, I guess, technically done, but it, for all intents and purposes, it is done. Um, the uh, 2022 uh, playground, as you can see, they kind of move through um, the different phases here. So we are, are done with Emporia Park, and that was resurfacing done. And then Fairbout Park, was, which was also resurfacing done at the playgrounds there, uh, which is great. If you haven't had a chance to go look at the, the new surfacing, it's, it's wonderful, it's soft, it's, uh, it's, it helps liven up the park, and it's really a great thing that uh, we're able to do. Um, and if you scroll down, if for those online, you can see um, just kind of all the, the neat projects that we get done. Um, we've taken a few off just because this list starts to lot, excuse me, this list starts to get pretty long here. Um, so with that, uh, that's uh, the CIP quarterly update. I'll stand for any questions. Questions for staff? Any question? I think you said it all. Troy, do you have any, anything to add to our presentation here? There's a lot. There is a lot. There's a lot going on, and then we have a few other things that are not on this list, like uh, working with League 42 and putting in uh, their fourth baseball field. Uh, there's a lot of other little things that just keep popping up that are small projects that, that we have to deal with. But um, this is a lot, I, and this is probably the most we've ever had at one time, with the exception of the total aquatics master plan. That was just a massive plan because uh, there was so many different sites. Uh, Striker was a huge project, but it was all on one site. Um, so I, I just have to say thank you to the engineering team. Thank you to Public Works for um, helping us lead through all these projects. And uh, it's really exciting stuff. Some of it you don't see uh, having major impacts until you actually go and visit the site and it really makes a difference. I will add my thanks uh, for the presentation and for all the hard work of staff. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Uh, we have no prior business to continue, so we'll move right along to the finance update. Thank you, Penny. Of course it did. We wait. Do you do we have an idea of um, when the pickleballs courts at um, Edgemore are going to get restriped? Or? So a couple things with that. I wanted to verify, make sure they have all the funding. Right. So I'm going to be getting with the Park Foundation and with uh, Becky Middleton to find out exactly all the funding that's going on with that. <clears throat> Since it's going to be more than fifty thousand dollars, I do want to take it to council. Uh, to accept the donation. Um, we typically, for large items, go to council and ask that they approve of the donation. Um, and then after that, uh, we will work with Becky and her contractor to make that happen. Um, so it's probably gonna be a winter project. Sure. And I would suspect that if council accepts the donation, um, which I wanna take to them sometime in October, okay. Uh, maybe November, we start uh, putting all the things together and we actually see some movement in December. Okay. Okay? Thank you. Mm -hmm. Nothing is easy. We, oh, no, I just wanted to make sure what the, you yeah. went there, so I didn't know if. Oh, what, I heard all about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wanted to make sure we had a timeline, you know. Oh. Over here. All right, Mr. Like Hall, ready. take us take us away. Good afternoon, Brandon Hall. I'm the uh, finance director for Park and Recreation. And so this this is where we're at through uh, through August of this year. 
Uh, revenues are looking really strong. Um, I've also added a new um, line there, a new uh, column for the revised budget so that you can see where, um, where we started the year and then after the budget process, um, kind of the changes that were made. Overall, we're looking at um, collecting about 91% so far uh, for the year of, of the revenues for the, um, of the budget. We're also $492,000 more uh, that we've collected more than we did this time last year. On the expenditure side, um, again, we're looking at about 65% of budget. Um, and we are spending about $1.6 million more than we did this time last year. But then again, we're also dealing with 2021, and that was a lot of things we didn't do because of COVID. Mm -hmm. So we are doing more. Um, we are still looking good at the budget. Um, the park and maintenance, the park maintenance and forestry is a little misleading when you look at it. Um, most of the savings that we have for the budget is all in personnel. So we're just not getting those positions full or filled as quickly. And so we are looking at about 80% of budget on the contractuals and commodities. So I am a little concerned there. However, we have the capacity that we may have to go to council later in the fall um, to move some budget from, the prof from professional services down to uh, contractuals and commodities. So on that note, I just wanted to add that <clears throat> that's part of the strategy that we were working with the budget right. office when we're creating the budget for next year was that we knew that we were gonna have a lot of salary savings and that typically that is not used for other items within the budget. Uh, but they wanted to work with us. We're gonna come up with a plan. Actually, I think we're meeting in a couple weeks to move some of that money into uh, contractuals and to commodities. And that way we can purchase more trees and start a plan to execute putting in more trees into the ground. And we're going to also ask in regards to some support with that in regards to some of the park maintenance items as well. So um, the perfect st storm that was really, really bad, COVID, COVID kept us from hiring. Uh, all of a sudden, we got the green light to hire, and now it's really difficult to hire. So we're in a situation where we have a lot of salary savings, but we want to make sure that we still have access to that money and don't give that money back and we want to use that for other items to include tree planting. Troy, so that's there, part of the strategy. What has been the feedback that you've received like from hiring candidates? So it, it's hot and cold. Um, we get some folks that we hire that are just awesome and, and are doing a great job. Uh, we've had some folks that come work for us for a week and then they have a better offer somewhere else and they leave us to go get a better job uh, that's paying more. So it's been a little bit of both, uh, but we've been working hard on all of our recruitment. And it's not just in parks. I've been talking to our friends over in Public Works. Uh, they're about, um, they're, I, I don't know the percentage, but they're, they're definitely not at 100%, not at 80%, probably not at even 70%. Um, so we're having a lot of issues getting people hired on. Um, it, it's, it's just that pendulum that swings back and forth. And as I think uh, inflation catches up with people that um, need a job, they're going to be looking for a job and we'll be ready to hire them and train them. Does that answer your question? Yeah, I was just like, if we're not competing with private industry salary wise, like, is that a conversation maybe we need to have as a parks department or maybe it's an overall bigger conversation? with the city government itself if it's other departments that are feeling the same pain? We've always had that challenge when we're competing with the public right. sector, uh, I mean the private sector. Um, we offer much, much better right. uh, benefits. Mm -hmm. um, there's not too many uh, uh, private companies that offer as much sick leave and vacation leave as we do. Right. They don't have a retirement program that we have. Uh, those are all things to weigh back and forth. But mm -hmm. if somebody who's young and coming into the workforce, that those things really don't matter. They want cash, right? So um, it's all about our strategy in regards to uh, recruitment, educating folks, getting them into the door. And typically, once we get people hired, uh, we've been with this for a long, long time. 
It's just a matter of getting them, getting the right people that have that ethic that we want them around. Get you another mic. Uh, no, I uh, I echo that concern because I, I just wonder. I mean, like it's great that we're doing gangbusters, but I wonder if we're leaving money on the table. I mean, that's really the, the at the end of the day when I, I echo uh, Commissioner Cabral's thought. I mean, how what is our diminished capacity because of our lack of ability to compete? Uh, and, and what does that mean for our bottom line ultimately? I mean, and I, and I, I don't know, I think we do need to have that, that, question, that discussion a little bit further, probably not today, but I, I think moving forward, a change of strategy, I think at least a recommendation from the board um, on specific areas of need that can be revenue focused, uh, potential revenue would be my only thought. Sorry, uh, but please proceed if we have more to go through. We're still in the middle yeah, of the presentation. No. Those are great. Uh, those are great comments, um, and yeah, we're constantly looking at strategies of, of moving forward, um, of how we deliver services. Mm -hmm. So, looking at cost recovery for the recreation side, we're all on target, um, doing better than last year, and looking at um, like meeting our internal goals. Um, summer camp is at 78%. However, this does not include, um, we're going to be charging off to some of the, like the CDBG grants and something like that. So that, um, that percentage will go up as we uh, charge off some of our expenses to grants. Um, specialty parks look good. Um, this includes Watson, um, includes the tennis center and pickleball. However, the tennis center and the pickleball are over 100%. They're both making money. Um, they're both doing really well. Uh, pools have a good year. Um, we're looking at 44% cost recovery as opposed to 38%. And, you know, uh, around 39, 40% is where, is where we expect them to be. So they're doing better than, than, what, was, than what our goal is. What's going on with athletics? Exactly. Right. <clears throat> so, um, a big part of that is uh, youth football, and that's one of our biggest revenue generators that covers all, all of our expenses. So as of now, I think we've put out a lot of uh, programs that have a lot of expenses, and we won't see revenues until later on in the fall. So this will balance out a little bit more as we move forward. Um, we probably don't have all the um, adult softball in revenues in place yet, so I think that's probably missing. Uh, for all the fall activities, um, so we'll see this number go up. Um, will it be 100%? I don't know. Uh, that's, we'll, we'll see, but it will definitely be more than 23. 23%. Does, does Stryker, do the, does the activities of Stryker feed into this as well, or is that separate? No, that's uh, okay. totally separate. Yeah, we don't see any revenue from there. Uh, they do pay some money that goes into uh, a maintenance fund for mm -hmm. the park but nothing in regards to our operations. Okay. Okay. What's the uh, revenue so far on the uh, inflatables? Just curious if you have a ballpark. Is that in here somewhere? Is that, I was just we were talking about uh, year over year. Are we seeing any revenue coming in from that right, new policy? The, uh, the revenue is gonna be captured in that shelter rental. Uh -huh. um, I don't have that broken out. I will take full credit right there then. 406%, right. that's just all inflatables is what I'd like to believe. <laughs> 100%. Um, I don't have that broken out um, about what percentage of that is inflatables. But I didn't really um, think of that as a shelter, but I guess it is. Right. It is a it's, it's, in, it's included, I think, in those shelter rental fees. Awesome. So, so moving on to golf, looking really good. Um, on the revenue side, again, looking at about $270,000, $280,000 more than what we spent, or more than what we've collected this time last year. Um, all the golf courses are looking good. Um, not really too concerned about the percentages of budgets, a lot of those. Um, however, we will be having um, conversations on the expenditure side, still looking good. Have spent a little bit more, um, but if you look at the bottom, um, we have about $2.3 million in unencumbered fund balance. We probably should start having the conversation of Having a good fund balance is good, but it also means that we're not spending on maintenance and things and reinvestment. So I think Jesse's going to talk to you a little bit about that. Um, so I don't want to get too far ahead. Right. And um, also, uh, what golf does it has a, a peak and valley. Even though we're 
we have our passes that help us give us a, a flattened out uh, revenue line, but uh, we're gonna have a lot more expenses at the end of the year. So that's not a true number. Uh, that's gonna, it's, it's definitely gonna go down as we pay uh, some expenses at the end of the year and we're not bringing in as much revenue. So that's gonna uh, go down a little bit. But uh, we're absolutely doing well and um, we're handing over Jesse uh, some, some good money for him to make some improvements. Yeah, I think the bottom line on this one is that we are in a good financial position to be able to, to do what we need to do in, in order to improve our courses um, with Jesse's plans moving forward. Um, looking really good on the cost recovery so far through August um, at all the golf courses. And with that, um, Sam, for any questions? Questions for staff. And if there's any other additional information that would be helpful to you guys, any other like trends that you guys want to see or line graphs or anything like that, um, let me know and then we can always tweak this presentation if it's, so it gets be more meaningful for you guys. Cool. Thank you, Brian. Thank oh, thanks, guys. You. All right. Troy, let's roll on ahead to a communication update if you have one. So we didn't have any items that were requested to go up to the city manager or council. And I don't have any communication from council or city manager to you. So I don't have anything else to add. Okay, let's uh, head on in. I know we uh, weren't able to hear from Katie last time you prepared. So please go on and give us the social media update. So before I actually start on the social media, I don't want to burst your bubble about the inflatables, but um, we actually haven't uh, done any shelter rentals for the inflatables just yet because, <laughs> because none of the vendors that we had reached out to have gone through the process just yet of certifying with us, but we are planning on an informational meeting in the next couple weeks, so keep an eye out for that being announced on social media. Oh, yeah. Thank you for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But we are, we are making plans for that, so we're, we're working on it. All right, so here is the follower overview for each of our pages. We are still seeing really steady follower growth on most of these accounts, including the Golf Wichita page, which uh, previously hadn't seen a lot of growth, but we are seeing that start to grow now with Jesse being here. I'm sure making a lot of changes. People are engaging more um, th with our social pages as well. And then the Twitter page has also seen a pretty decent growth over the last few months. It's now at almost 500 followers. <clears throat> so for the Park and Recreation Facebook page, um, the reach wasn't quite as high uh, as it was at the beginning of the summer, which makes sense. People are getting amped up and now it's starting to taper off a bit, but still reasonably high with a reach of 100,000 for the month of August and well over 200,000 as a whole for the entire summer. Um, and it's been pretty constant if you compare spring and summer, they're about the same reach. Uh, the unique page visits actually went up almost 50% over the course of the summer. So while the reach has been about the same, more people are going to the actual page and engaging with the page itself. And the Facebook page has been a really good source for boosting our class registrations. So it was noted that when we uh, boosted the scuba classes, uh, we saw registrations come in almost immediately, and by the end of the week, they tended to fill up. So that's been a good source for that. Similarly, when rentals have been promoted, the sales team sees an increased number of inquiries for the week. And uh, the new Seasons venue, which there's a nice picture there in the middle, um, actually opened up for uh, the first time. Its first rental happened this past weekend, and it is booked up uh, most weekends through December. And then um, Tim's been really helpful and been going out and visiting parks, especially those with the new features and taking pictures for Shanna to promote on our Facebook page. So we've got the new swing here at Grandparents Park, uh, some improvements at Pawnee Prairie Park trails, um, and those have been pretty, um, getting a lot of feedback from, from our guests on Facebook. And unfortunately, we are seeing a lot um, of feedback regarding some more depressing posts. So the vandalism that was mentioned earlier, these are some of the uh, more recent incidents that have been posted about. Uh, the reach has been really high, 40 to 80,000 just for each post. Um, people are giving feedback. 
and they're supportive of increased security of these measures because people want to protect the assets in their community. So we are initiating some CIP, CIP funding uh, at tomorrow city council meeting so we can work towards adding cameras at some of these locations starting with the pools. Uh, for OJ Watson Park, the page reach for Facebook was down a little bit from spring to summer, but it was up 60% from July to August with a reach of almost 30,000 just for the month of August. So it's kind of going out with a bang there. And these uh, informational posts have been sort of the forefront that people are interacting with. Just, I think, exciting to get the information so they know what's going on at the park. Um, the hours changed after school started. Uh, notices on when the train is down for maintenance. And then Labor Day, it was open, and those were the hours. Um, so people are just finding it helpful that they can plan their day around uh, the information that's been given. <clears throat> open streets. Uh, again, this is pretty seasonal based on when the events are. So the reach was down a bit in August, but it's trending really high already just for the first week, week and a half of September. Um, and we'll see that reach continue over the next week since the event is coming up next weekend. Um, so content has been posted multiple times a week. More recently, it's been posted several times every day, including a link to buy some merchandise, the wellness benefits to this event, uh, answers to some frequently asked questions such as pets are welcome as long as you leash them and clean up after them. It's a certified tobacco free event. And then there's also this uh, route map which was shared including some vendor info for each of the stops along the route. And then finally Golf Wichita again has been trending really well. <clears throat> a lot more people commenting on posts. The reach was up 37% from July to August. Uh, we've been continuing to post about course improvements, uh, retaining wall on the pond at Tex, uh, bridge updates at McDonald, and then of course most importantly, this really cute picture of Jack the Goose Dog was posted and given a shout out on National Dog Day. So again, cute stuff like that gets a lot of reach from our fans. And I'll stand for any questions you may have. All right, questions for staff. No questions? Uh, <laughs> Troy? I would like to add that uh, we went through a lot of social media posts sharing a lot of the damage that was incurred over the past year. And I think you guys have heard me talk a lot about all the vandalism that we've been receiving. And sometimes uh, through the budget process, we get a gift. And tomorrow, as Kitty mentioned, I'll be going to council for $500,000 worth of uh, lighting and security cameras. I had, I had asked for it, but not not really expecting a, a positive outcome. And I think a lot of this social media uh, really kind of persuaded uh, the council as well as the city manager and, and finance uh, how serious this really is. It's been uh, just the biggest nightmare. It's been uh, every time we turn around, uh, whether it's a break in, whether it's just. Uh, pure vandalism, whether it's uh, been graffiti, it's just been the worst 10 months worth of, of horrible situations. So um, hopefully when we get the cameras installed and we get some more security lighting, it will hopefully um, reduce the amount of, of issues that we have. But the social media really made it aw uh, aware to the public. And, and so I was really glad that we were able to do that. Troy, do you know how much money we've spent on vandalism this year? A lot. Um, I, off the top of my head, I don't know that number, uh, but... Do you think we'll get it for the next one, for the next meeting? I'll see what we can do. I, I know some of the smaller events, like the, like the slide that got the fire damage, that, that right. alone was like $5,000 plus. Mm -hmm. right. um, just some of the pools, you know, with windows being broken, $5,000 easy. Mm -hmm. um, and we did get that donation from the Park Foundation from, for, the, for the McAfee pool. Um, the air conditioning unit at Hyde Park was the big one because that was uh, broken and due in July, and then it got fixed and broken in again in August, and so that was like sixty-five thousand mm -hmm. dollars worth of damage just to that unit. Yeah, you, you know, I, I think to kind of add to what uh, Commissioner Cabral is saying is, is, I think it would be wise. I, I really like the outreach specifically because I saw those. I saw people sharing that. People get really upset about assets being misused and vandalized. I think if, if it, I think having a running tally and just putting it out there, saying like this year. Vandalism has cost you as a taxpayer 
yeah. X thousand dollars and like send that out as a meme on social media. I'd mm -hmm. share that and like that kind of pressure. If you want this stuff to stop, you got to make it very socially unacceptable that if somebody's up to this, then you know, your neighbors are going to, there's the social shame of like, don't do this. Like that's, that's a jerk thing to do. And how do you make that visible and real for people? You say, this is coming out of your wallet. Uh, this is your neighbor. This could be going to make your kid's summer better, uh, but we're spending it because some guy decided to, or gal, uh, decided to be a jerk. So this gets me all riled up. I don't like this. I don't like ending on that note, but I would say uh, one, one thing actually that, that since we did have this discussion on, on the Hyatt, I love what you're doing on social media. Clearly uh, the numbers don't lie. Uh, can we maybe take it as a test pilot or, or a test program with this Hyatt discussion and put that forward on our social media channels and say, hey, here's an objective view of what this plan is. We had this discussion. Hey, public, hey, residents of Wichita, users of parks, what is your feedback? Let's open that up and, and let's give people links to forum. I know we like to use forum as a system if we want to do that, but I'd like to see that discussion on social media because if you want to have active, positive conversations, I think that's a good way to start. And that way we can look next month and say that we had a discussion. Yes, Ms. Fleming. Also, could you add like golfers to your thing? Like, you know, golfers here? And I don't see you have said anything about social media about the dog parks, and I'm sure you'll get a lot of hits. I mean, for those at home, she was asking about the dog parks and publicizing <clears throat> dog parks. Yeah, no, I'll reach out to our communications team and see if we can share some more info about that. I'm, I'm sure they, they would, I know they do tend to do throughout the year whenever we're, we start on projects, especially around CIP funding, we will promote those projects we're working on. So I'll ask them to share some posts about dog parks as well. I know we have our, they have individual people who've done their own site on social media, but I thought that might be a good place. Because there's a lot of people going, well, where's the dog parks? Where's that? I get a lot of those questions. Okay. All right, if there are no more questions, uh, thank you very much. Thanks. Really do appreciate that. All right, the moment everybody's waited for, the recreation update for Mr. Reggie Davidson. Why it does this to me as an elusive it. Good afternoon, I'm Reggie Davidson, the Superintendent of Recreation. So I want to kind of give an overview of uh, what's been taking place in the Recreation Division. We've been extremely busy. You'll see that from the numbers that Brandon showed early, that we have quite a bit of increase from last year in our revenue in, in our areas there. So we had a transition this year in our, in our Aquatics Division. Uh, Brian Hill, that was on board for us for quite some time, transitioned out. And uh, Joe Martin came in and filled in uh, two weeks before the summer started and has done a great job for us in that transition. So we closed uh, two of our pools on August the 14th, Harvest and Municipal, and our Orchard Pool closed on the 28th of, uh, of August. Uh, the other pool stayed open into uh, the Labor Day weekend, and our Splash Fast are currently open now until the end of this month, and they're operating four to eight, uh, Monday through Friday, and then 10 to eight on the weekends. So we did close some of those as well to strategically have some available at different parts of the city for the have access for the community. Uh, we had a successful swim season for this year, had quite a few people that participated. Uh, we made some improvements to some of the things that we were doing there with scheduling and having some additional software to help us manage that process as well to uh, help with the increase that we saw in those numbers. So overall, a good swim season and our cost recovery is up this year compared to, to in the past as well. So Boston Rec Center uh, was one of our uh, sites that we had for voting. Has 861 people that came out for the polling station there. We'll be a site for them again in November. So we are working with the uh, with the polling district to make sure that we are able to handle those crowds as we see with the midterm election and the other item that was on the agenda that was really popular. So it got a lot of people out for that. 
So our specialty camps uh, did really well this summer over at Boston. Uh, we worked with our tech, tech camps again this year, and majority of those had long wait lists that we had, so we're looking at ways that we can potentially expand that for next summer so we can get more of those young people in and have the opportunity to participate as well. So that's a good problem for us to have. Uh, majority of the camps that we had, they're made, and then uh, quite a few of them had wait lists that were there as well. So Evergreen Rec Center, uh, uh, is working real diligent with some of the things that we're doing there with uh, Matt Martinez, who is our center director there, is the lead for Open Streets ICT. So we have quite a few uh, 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 involvement with that. We're getting vendors and things that you can see. We have 123 vendors that signed up today for that. Uh, you could see a little while back we did the disc golf course there on site, and we have uh, 10 students that are signed up for that program that took place on the August the 13th. That's something that's getting to be really uh, popular. Uh, we're exposing it to both young people there in the community as well as some of the adults that are there that used in the course as well. Tennis Center continues uh, to be really busy. Uh, so we're seeing quite a, uh, a bit of uh, work that's been done there as well. Uh, one of the things that we transition with, we're working with public works this summer. Um, at this is transitioning from our regular lights that we had on site to our LED lights for the, uh, the bubble there that made it more efficient for us where we were able to reduce some of our costs for uh, uh, expenditures for our electricity bill as well as just making it more uh, visible for those who are participating using it there on site. Uh, we're still working with uh, the tennis uh, with uh, Newman University uh, and also looking for uh, transitioning, potentially having a classical school. I know that's one of the questions that came up earlier that's currently using Edgemore. We're exploring some options for them potentially come down to the tennis center, use space there. Uh, Mac Adams has a potential option as well as looking at College Hill that has tennis courts there as well uh, for them to be able to host their practices and uh, meet their needs uh, moving forward. Uh, the Adult Pickleball League continues to grow. Uh, we've had uh, quite a few participation in registration with our league there. We had 26 in our uh, men's 18 plus and our women's 18 plus we had 14 and our mixed 18 plus we had 32 participants in that program. Then our 50 plus program 10 and then our mixed 50 plus 12 participants for a total of 94 players for that session. So pickleball is something that we're looking at expanding in new leagues. It's something that's new for us that we're doing there on site. Uh, with uh, You mentioned that uh, Noe, who came on board as a contractor, who's managing that process with us in, in conjunction with our tennis center director and assistant director, with being able to offer more program there on site and throughout the city. Uh, we had a, a new Stars and Stripe uh, tournament that was held there on August 19th through the 21st. I had 110 players that were there on site for that and that generated over $8,500 in revenue for that particular tournament over a two-day time frame. So as you can see, there's a need there, and we're looking at ways that we continue to offer that throughout the city in preparation for our new complex that will be coming on board as well. So Woodland Rec Center uh, continues to be one of our rec centers that's uh, extremely active. Uh, we have uh, our lessons there for piano, drums, and boxing that are private lessons that we offer on site there. Uh, for June, July, and, uh, and uh, August, you can see there was almost $3,000 of revenue that was there for those 15-minute sessions that are being offered uh, throughout the summer time frame. Uh, the summer session had a uh, 35% increase from what we did before with our private lessons there. And we're also looking at our rental revenue cre increase quite a bit as well for doing that time frame. There are one of our sites, like with our other rec centers, is that we almost have general jail rentals most of the nights that are there throughout the week for either uh, basketball groups that are using our space there or either uh, soccer leagues or other groups that are coming on site using those facilities so it's extremely busy. Wanted to kind of highlight some of the activities that took place there that went back into the previous month. Uh, we had Lynette Woodard that was in town for their 50 year uh, anniversary for the center. You can see uh, Mr. Hopman was there. He won the slam dunk contest there for the. Uh, Is <laughs> that right? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But yeah, we had a uh, <laughs> great turnout for that uh, league uh, that was there. Uh, we were able to offer that through uh, our grant funding that we received through Child Care Aware uh, to cover. Uh, uh, Lynette Wooden coming in and doing the training there in the free basketball camp for the kids in the community. So that was a big turnout uh, and a lot of good support for that event as well. 
And one of the things that we try to pride ourselves on doing is establishing some good partnerships in the community to be able to do programming at low to no cost for our community. And the Miracle League is one of those examples of that. You guys are probably aware that Shields is coming in town uh, that's opened up at Town East. And we were able to partner with them that they made a donation, uh, $5,000 to cover 100 uh, participants to be able to be in our Miracle League at no cost. That's the first time since the uh, organization has been around that we've hosted at Orchard that we've been able to do that. It's been well received by the community and we're looking at how we can continue to expand on that as well. Uh, we have a great partnership with the Salvation Army. As you guys can remember a little while back, we started working with them through Councilman Hoheisel and Councilman Johnson that looking at food deserts in the community and opening up our community centers uh, for providing food to the community. And from that, we were able to build on that relationship and they helped out with a, our Easter egg hunt out at Watson Park and then that expanded to them actually doing a uh, meal program during the summer for our summer camp participants for every weekend. Our kids in our program can take a meal home for them to eat on the weekend. And from that, we also expanded that back to school book uh, drive where we were able to give over uh, 200 uh, young people uh, free school supplies and backpacks for them and their uh, members in their household. So we're always looking at ways that we can expand and build upon community partnerships. And through that, we're looking at, for the fall, doing a coat drive in conjunction with them, as well as a Christmas gift giveaway for young people in the community that may have a need as well. So I'll open up for any questions if you guys have any. Questions for staff. But you had a question. We uh, had a presentation last month, uh, if everybody remembers, from the cyclocross community. I was curious if you've had further discussions with them since we had that last meeting. Because I remember one thing that was brought up, and you just mentioned community partnerships. That's what got my brain rolling. Like, for example, like REI is a major outfitter. They would be natural potential partners for that cyclocross group. I didn't know if they'd made any kind of movements forward on that or if there'd been any discussion on the cyclocross community. I'm not familiar. I'm not sure. Mr. Okay. Hoffman is. I know David was the point of contact that was going to be working. That's right. Okay. Excuse me. Week. Just. So we, we're catching up and finishing up summers. We hadn't had a chance to catch up with them. It's something that is on the item, uh, agenda items for uh, David and I to follow through up on. So we have not. Uh, we will. Um, just a matter of cool. time. Okay. Um, final question. I, I really do appreciate when you, the thing the other got my mind going was when you mentioned how, how many of our park assets are actually polling places as well. I thought about how big the turnout we had in August. I imagine we're probably going to have another big turnout in November. Uh, all of the, anything with that aside, that's an opportunity in my mind for us to promote programs that we'd like people to sign up for memberships. I don't know if there's a strategy in place, but maybe that's a, a quick discussion we can have about can what our, what's that? I don't think we could do that if they're voting. No, you can have a, a pick up a brochure to say, join our, you know, okay. golf, get a golf membership. I'm I mean, like, we're not, we're not telling anybody how to vote. We're saying, hey, you know, <laughs> okay. uh, you know, join our winter programs, our spring programs or this. If we have that many people and we know they're coming to our assets, that's a captive audience. Let's use them. And so the, just that's a recommendation for when people, when November comes around, November 8th is going to be probably a pretty busy day for a lot of folks. So let's um, capture their attention. And one of the things that we've been able to do with that as well through some of the grant funding that we have, we have digital display boards in our rec centers now where we can actually put promotions up mm. for different upcoming events. So that's great. We know we have high traffic. We try to put some of the upcoming events there, but also keep our guys out in the area there for people to pick up as well. So we try to capitalize on when we have those uh, increased numbers. In the Super smart. Well. Super Super smart. All right. Hey, thank you very much, Reggie. If there's nothing else. Okay. All right. Here we go with uh, Jesse. We weren't able to hear from you before. I can't wait to hear the update this month. So we are rolling into golf. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Jesse Kaufman, director of the golf division. Um, I'll start with the rounds report and then get into some updates. So I'm um, just kind of going over the rounds report year to date. Um, so far this year, we're about 3,000 rounds up over last year, um, which is phenomenal. Um, the uh, MAC is up 9%. The only one that's slightly down is SIM, and I think we 
we've identified some of the issues there that we can correct, and they're, they're only slightly down. Um, just looking at the month of August, we are up uh, nearly six, 600 rounds um, over last year. And if you go back to 2020, that was right after we reopened. Obviously, that was the year golf went absolutely berserk. Um, we're, we're almost on pace with that year. So um, it's, it's great. The, the, what, what's happening in golf has continued to happen. Um, Every time I go to the courses, there I mean, it's just as fast as we can get people on the course and, and try to keep things moving. So uh, all good signs with that. Cart comparison, uh, year to date, we're at $914,000 on cart revenue. Um, last year at this point, we were at $861,000. So we're $55,000 up, $54,000 up um, over last year to this point, which is a very, very good thing, obviously. Um, food and beverage, so I have to make a confession here. The last not the last meeting, but the last one that I actually gave the report, I said that we had doubled last year. That was my first time running the reports. My revenue numbers for this year were correct. For last year, I, I have not figured out where I come up with that number. I've tried a thousand times. So uh, not quite double, but still really, really good. So you can see this year we're at 442,000. Um, last year at this point, we were at 342,000. So we're up $100,000 $100, on F&B. Um, and if you look beyond last year, it was 230,000 in, in uh, 20 and, and before COVID 295. So um, huge increases in food and beverage sales, which is great. Uh, we've got Kevin, we continue to uh, put together ideas and, and I'm gonna get into that in a minute on how we can definitely improve that even, even more. Um, with the merchandise comparison, um, Sales of merchandise are up significantly, $290,000 total. Um, the bulk of, that, bulk of that is coming from Auburn Hill. Scott, he's, uh, he does a fantastic job with this shop. Um, he keeps wow. it merchandise really well, does a good job rotating the merchandise and keeping it fresh, and he's at $130,000. Um, you can look at his previous numbers there. Last year he did 110, um, and going back he was in the $80,000 mark. So um, merchandise is doing really well as well. Monthly membership comparison. Um, at this point in the year, the way I look at it, an increase is good. It's really hard to get someone to join a program that they know probably has a couple more months of good weather and then they're, you know, it's going to be hit or miss. Uh, but we've improved every category by a few except for junior memberships. And I think that's going back to college and, and so forth. So um, all together, we, we gained 17 um, new members. And um, I, I just had an idea a few seconds ago at the voting polls, we can probably double um, these numbers, these membership numbers, if we promote it as people come out to our sites to vote, right? Love That's it. the plan? All right. I'd love that. That's super cool. <laughs> um, the driving ranges are, they continue to do well as also, um, $137,000 um, year to date. Last year we were basically spot on $137,000 as well. So um, over the winter we do have a lot of ideas to improve the ranges and make them more appealing to our guests. Um, there's not the targets aren't great, the tee boxes aren't great, so I've got a lot of ideas to really put into place and, and make that better. Um, also add, like, um, what do you call it, team building events and things on our ranges and get more than just someone buying a bucket and going and play. There's no group type activities on our ranges, so there's a huge opportunity there, I feel. Um, we know the weather, August was extremely dry and extremely hot. We had one inch of rain and that came on the 27th, I believe. Um, and that was it for the month. So it was a big challenge. Uh, the courses were definitely dry. I've really tried to get out and see a lot more courses in the area just to get familiar with the, the you know, the, the diff, you know, this, every place I go, the grasses are totally different. The, the processes are different. So um, as I went to other courses, it's obviously, it's not just us dealing with that, but uh, we've, we've done better at some places than others and had better success. So um, I actually have a meeting with our superintendents on Thursday to kind of really put the plan in motion for uh, going into the into the fall and, and into next year to have us come out and open the courses next year in a lot better condition um, and, and kind of open their minds up to, to doing new things and doing the things that need to happen so our courses can get back to the conditions that they should be in. Um, so before I go into updates, any questions on any of the, the numbers with the rounds report? Questions for staff? Jesse, what's the uh, schedule for the aeration process? Yeah, that was my, a cycle? my next thing. Yeah, we, we did sim last week. We've got Auburn Hills will start tomorrow. Uh, or it might have been 
might have been today, is it Tuesday? Okay, this week, so tomorrow and Wednesday. Um, the following week will be Tex, and then the following week will be Mac. So Sim came out really well. Um, we got a little got rain, which was, yeah, yeah which helped. Um, if we could do that, have that same rain pattern yeah. each in the next four weeks, that'd be great. Yeah, yeah so, uh, but it, it did, it came out really well. So a few weeks of, uh, you know, it's a necessary evil with, with golf. You have to do that to the greens. Um, but they, it's, uh, I don't expect any problems. The equipment's all working well. We, we're sharing equipment. And I, I think we're in a good place. Troy? Speaking of social media, this was a, a really popular social media post. We put out the schedule on social media with an explanation as to why we aerate. Um, and I think it got tons and tons of hits. So uh, another nice. example of our social media doing well. So I'll use that as a lead way into social media, what I was going to say about that. We uh, have a lot of plans that will start really next week um, on different content that we want to put out, um, whether it's Q&As with the superintendents, with the head pros, um, all the projects that I'm going to get into in a second that we're going to do, sending, you know, continuously updating everyone on projects and improvements that we're doing. I think they, they definitely desperately want to see things happen at the courses. So. I'm um, working, I have a meeting actually in the morning with, with Shanna Abelhans, our marketing person, to um, kind of get that plan together so we can continuously put out content and keep people updated. Um, and we're going to do a lot of humorous things on there too. We've got plans to keep it, keep it light, keep it fun. Um, so I, I think our social media will, will really get a bump over the next few months. Um, with the improvement, some of the, the things obviously we saw the, where we're at budget-wise, um, we're working really hard right now on putting that plan together in the clubhouses. At MAC and SIM, um, we're looking at doing a complete inside renovation of the area, complete, put new flooring in, uh, paint the walls, new ceilings, all the things that at, at MAC, the same floor I think is there from 1930 something. Um, it's funny when you walk in the pro shop, there's a picture from 1955 that it has a picture of the, the pro shop area. You look at that picture, you look over, you look at the, it's ex there's absolutely no difference between 1955 and that. So um, it's amazing that, that they look as the way they do, quite honestly, for, for that many years, but it's time definitely to put some reinvest and get the clubhouses up and going. Um, we've got, we're, we're looking at, well, Kevin and I have spent so much time with contractors and getting quotes and ideas and figuring out what we can and can't do and cost and everything. So. Um, and then at Tex, the main, the inside it needs some work, but I think the outside of that building is my my main focus right now. A lot of the the boards around the building, the the facial boards are rotting away. It's just a lot of uh, just needs a lot of work on the outside. So that's kind of my focus there, as well as doing the inside. And then Auburn, um, with it being the newer clubhouse, obviously it's uh, it's not in that bad of a shape. There's some little things that we've already started. We got new tables for the uh, conference space. At that we, we've already started attracting groups for business meetings and different non-golf type events. We have that space that we can use every day and, and bring that revenue on top of without interfering with the golf revenue. Um, we've already got several groups that have either booked or shown interest to, to book soon. So um, trying to tap into all that supplemental revenue away, aside from golf um, to really expand our, our budget. Um, Yeah, and then like I say, on the courses, that's that's our product, obviously, is golf. Um, I'm gonna meet with the superintendents. I've already met with them individually. We're gonna have a group meeting on Thursday and that's gonna be the entire focus is for this course to be perfect. I don't want any excuses. I wanna eliminate excuses for you. So what do we need to do? What do you need um, and go forward? So we'll start working on, on that. Well, we've already been working on it, but Thursday will be a big day to fire away and get what you need and let's go. So uh, we did get two new mowers recently. We got a, a uh, rough, wide area rough mower at Tex that was delivered last week. And then probably tomorrow we will have a rough mower delivered at Sim, um, should be delivered tomorrow. Um, that's gonna definitely help them keep up with, with the area. It's a lot, of, a lot of rough, especially at Tex. That's a lot of ground to cover. It's a huge place. Um, and that, that wide deck mower, they'll be able to do it in half the time. So, so we ordered those. 10 months ago, 11 months ago? Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's been a nightmare in regards to uh, supply chain, <clears throat> all, the, all different types of things. It's not just for golf, not just for mowers, but uh, just, this is just another example of all the things that we're having to deal with. It's another nuisance. 
But yeah, it took a year, 11 months to get those mowers in. And so as we are working on, uh, you know, I was half joking that we had a lot of money to spend in golf, and we do, we need to be very strategic on it. And it's not just gonna be an open checkbook, but we wanna put a really good plan together. And that's what Jesse's gonna be doing. And with the idea that we know that some of the things that we're gonna be purchasing for golf, um, we won't be getting for another year, simply because of the supply chain. But if we don't do it now, um, it's gonna take two years. Mm. So, uh, so I'm really excited that uh, Jesse's been working on this and um, we will be bringing some of these plans back to you guys. Yep. And anything else, Jesse? Yeah, a couple, just a couple quick things. One other thing, that our carts that we, we rent out to our customers are, are terrible. Um, we, that was one of the first things that I noticed when I came to do the initial visit was the, the cart were in bad shape. Um, I've got meetings with the, the big three vendors set up over the next couple of weeks. They're bringing in some of their big wigs because we have we're, we would be a big enough account. Uh, the first one is on Wednesday to kind of figure out there's a few different options that we could look at going. Um, and I'm, I'm really excited to talk to them. But as Troy was saying, you order a fleet now, you're probably not going to get it until potentially August of next year. Um, they've all kind of told me verbally that we would be a big enough account. They would try to prioritize us and get them made, but I don't want to, you know, bank on that. But we have to do something with the carts every time, especially at Mac. Every time I'm there, they're going to pull carts off the cart off the course that broke down. Um, mm -hmm. And it's, if there's, they've gotten two years worth of play for each of the last three years because it's been so busy. So instead of going out once a day, they're going out twice a day. Mm -hmm. um, and you got carts that were already older going into that period, and it's just they're they're bad. So that's one of the biggest complaints I've, I've definitely been hearing, and and we're working on that plan as well. Um, and then the last thing I'll, I'll add is um, I'm kind of waiting for the season to die down. We're, we're not, we're, we don't have a ton of staff right now, so it's hard for me to have big meetings with everyone because they're, they're working. Uh, but once we get, in, you know, we get into some weather and slower time, I've got a huge kind of a plan. I'm going to unroll for customer service training. Um, I've got several training scheduled, different things that I've, I've put together over the last several years. Um, I think that's, you know, once we get, work, we get kind of a, Four phase plan is the, the clubhouses and what we offer, the food and beverage, the golf courses, and then the customer service would be the, the fourth side of that. So bringing all that together um, and really before the season open next year, opens next year, that's my goal is to have all that in place and rolling and get the ball rolling on all these areas to improve. For any questions or Troy? One other update um, and uh, we've been talking about this golf governance committee and I think Jesse's identified almost everybody. We we're, we're want to uh, verify one more person, and once we get that, we're going to take it to council, and hopefully we can get that done this week um, so we can start getting that committee, uh, the Golf Governance Committee, together. And uh, they're going to have a huge impact on shaping a lot of these decisions as well. So um, we're excited about that because uh, they can be huge. Uh, proponents of all the things that we're trying to get done at golf. So as soon as we get that done, we want to make sure you guys are in the loop of that as well. Um, and I, I think we do have one representative from the park board that is on that committee. And although they're a non-voting member, I think uh, since it is underneath the umbrella of parks and recreation and it is all park property, I think it's really important that we have that representation on that committee. All right. Anything else, Jesse? That's all I've got. Any other questions for staff? Uh, I just wanted to add, I, you said one thing that really stuck with me is like, what do we need to be perfect as a department? And I really, I just, I wanted to say, really appreciate that attitude. I appreciate you looking at this situation saying, what can we do our best at? I just. I'm really confident we made the right decision, and I can't wait to see what you're, uh, what you're up to next, because things uh, are, are proven pretty good so far. So keep up the good work. I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah. OK. Uh, where are we with uh, park maintenance and forestry? Good afternoon. Looks very much like David, doesn't he? He does. <laughs> I am not David. Let's see how do you work this thing? Got the wrong, the wrong 
thing here. So, my name is Gary Ferris. I am the arborist for the city of Wichita. I, again, I am not David McGuire. <laughs> so I'm standing in for him and I'm gonna be talking about maintenance today. I'm gonna start out with forestry section. Uh, since that is what I know best, that is the, the work section that I manage. So in the forestry section, we do a lot of different things. Uh, you guys see this report every month, uh, but our inspections, and I don't know if you remember last year, and I think being involved in this meeting, I'm gonna do a better job of presenting my numbers and kind of do a month over month, maybe a year over year comparison of where we're at. But our inspections uh, for this month, which is going out and taking a look at, at trees by request and by just our inspectors being out in the community uh, are up significantly. Uh, our pruning numbers are up significantly. That has a lot to do with the number of storm responses that we haven't had to take care of. Uh, our storm responses are down quite a bit and our tree removals are up as well. Again, a lot of that has to do with uh, the good weather that we've had uh, to deal with. Uh, we've had a lot of opportunity to complete some uh, special projects. Our uh, project out at Swanson, getting prepared for the new bridge to come in, we could, were able to complete that. Uh, College Hill, we had a special project with a, a neighbor that had some specific requests about some trees that were negatively affecting their property. We took care of that. We also took care of uh, several dead trees that were around the pool. The removal of those dead trees really enhanced the view from the street of the pool, so it made that more attractive and a safer environment. Um, we do a lot of tree watering. When we do um, uh, tree planting, we go back on a three-year basis and, and water those trees. So in just the month of August, we had a little over 7,500 different watering events where we're actually watering a tree. Um, and our support activity um, is just ongoing of our operations, really. Uh, but we're able to get a focus back on to our normal work with the weather that we've been having because the storms have kind of calmed down. Uh, in the month of August, uh, two of our four uh, inspectors moved on from uh, from their position here. They moved on one to MABCD and another outside the city. Uh, and we were able to fill those positions readily uh, with internal candidates and they are really making a big impact. I'm really happy to have those two uh, employees in a new position and they're really performing well. Uh, we still have about 27 vacancies uh, to fill. Uh, 53 budgeted positions. Uh, we had 14 scheduled interviews in August and with about a 57% no-show rate um, that uh, makes a challenge for getting people hired, but we are working on it very diligently. Uh, it, <clears throat> getting, things, getting things done, there's a specific process, there's things that you have to go through, uh, and it takes a while, but we are working really hard uh, as a team to uh, to push those things through. So uh, we do have some new hires coming on uh, this next pay period, which I'm really excited about. Uh, and we're actually getting some external candidates starting. So our numbers of employees will increase and vacancies will decrease. Looking forward to that. Um, let's see, whoops, I went back to, I skipped through that. Well, anyway. We have uh, changed our process for MABCD inspections. MABCD, they, they take care of or are in charge or have authority on private property, whereas we do not. Uh, so we changed our inspection uh, system for that, so it takes less time from our inspectors. The same work gets done, the same observations are made but it's just less time on our part and it really has worked well. So in August, we went from having five, six, nine uh, inspections for MABCD a month to we really sent one inspector out to an MABCD inspection. We still had the same number of calls and, and issues, but we were just able to take care of them in a different way through, through digital photos and, and things like that. And so when we can make 
legitimate calls through that process, we make them that way. It takes a lot less time. When we cannot make those, you know, really educated calls, then yeah, we go out and we take a look at that. Uh, we do have a volunteer tree planting process or a project coming up, and that's a really exciting situation uh, at the end of September. So park maintenance. Um, work is continuing, grounds maintenance that is uh, continuing to go on. They're going to be rebidding their uh, contracts for the next three years. So they're getting geared up for that. A lot of overseeding is happening. Uh, I was at uh, the library, uh, not library, the Wichita Art Museum, uh, looking at a tree project there and I could see all the new seed coming up. It was really nice. So that's going to be fun and exciting for the, the look of the art museum. Uh, irrigation is a big issue, uh, trying to keep ahead of the drought, and so they're working really hard with that. Um, I know they're still working with a vendor to uh, restore the well there at South Lakes. Uh, illegal dumping is a continual problem, and um, the struggle is real with the trash because they're still only able to run one operational truck right now. So that continues to be a problem. And then uh, the Manissa Bridge was a project that uh, Forestry and Park Maintenance partnered up to resolve. There was a huge amount of overgrowth and um, I don't know, brush, brush volunteer trees that were just overgrown and, and really causing some, uh, some heartburn there. So we were able to clear that and that actually paved the way for Public Works to come in and take the debris that had washed up on the uh, bridge abutments uh, and they were able to, to capture that and take that away and we didn't have to, which was great. Let's see. Construction special projects. Um, this is run uh, and led by uh, Brett Russell. Uh, he's an absolute rock star. There's several pages here of accomplishments, and I don't think that he listed everything. Uh, he has a relatively small crew, but he stays very, very busy. Um, as you can see here, there's uh, a lot of different things. One of the highlights that was mentioned before was the striping of uh, some of the parking lots that was done through in, with internal staff, and that was really important that it wasn't having to be contracted out. So uh, that was really, really nice. They had the equipment to do that. Uh, and I think that new equipment is relatively new. And uh, then of course, uh, they go through and they replace damaged uh, park assets and uh, all kinds of things that they're just fixing all the time uh, and dealing with uh, graffiti. That was mentioned before, uh, various items that get vandalized, they're there to repair and replace, and that takes up a lot of their time. And again, lots of different uh, projects that they've completed uh, throughout the month of August. Um, so they were able to, uh, I was had one highlighted that I wanted to hit on very intensely. Oh yeah, the, as the last one, uh, they completed 369 playground inspections. Um, That's really huge for the number of people that they have in their, in their staff. Um, but those 369 inspections, those yield more work, things that need to happen, but it keeps our community safe and uh, it's a, just a very, very important thing to do. Uh, actually, it takes a special uh, certification, if I'm right, uh, to be able to do that and to do it uh, legally. So uh, they have that and they, they run with it. So uh, support activity for them. Uh, I don't know that our department would run <laughs> uh, without their support. Uh, they really do a lot. They've. Uh, done everything from moving around picnic tables and ping pong tables, putting those together that have been ordered. Uh, they've gone and, and used heavy equipment to spread the uh, sand out uh, at Botanica for them because it was just overloaded uh, and, and, and the spoils of uh, construction. And uh, yeah, the, this is another part where uh, forestry uh, worked with uh, 
construction with the flagpole there at Stevens Memorial. We helped them because forestry has the, the lifts available to do that. Um, and, you know, like I said, Brett's a rock star and, and he's getting a lot of things done. He's either that good or he's just better at telling the story than the rest of us. Uh, but uh, they just, they're everywhere. And every time you need something done, they can get it done. So there's a lot of things that, uh, that are on this list. This is the one slide that I think Brett really did not tell the truth. Uh, because there's only one slide of scheduled activity for September, and I think that's a lie. I think he's got a lot of things lined up for September, but uh, there's going to be spending a lot of time with closing pools. Uh, they're going to be working on uh, play, playground, playground safety inspections uh, continually, and again, uh, vandalism will be responded to as it comes in. So a lot more things on there uh, than I think you wanted me to read, uh, but I am open to any questions that you might have. Questions for staff? Anything to add, Troy? Yeah, I just want to add the, the biggest challenge that we've seen this summer has really been the increase of homeless activity mm -hmm. in the homeless camps. Uh, not too far away over here at uh, the Mayor's Park, we've cleared that out several times. and. I drove by this morning and there's a new camp over here at Mayor's Park. Uh, but one of the pictures that you saw, we actually saw an old camper that was wheeled in uh, amongst the trees. Uh, we've seen <coughs> uh, broken down cars that, that people are living out of. And it's really kind of a, a difficult situation because uh, we're trying to handle it with as much respect and dignity as we possibly can. Uh, there is definitely an impact um, on a lot of different levels, environmental, uh, a, lot of, a lot of trash. There's also some concerns about safety because a lot of times we find uh, needles or some illegal drugs at these locations as well. Um, and, and we're dealing with folks that are having a huge difficulty, whether uh, it's mental illness or financial issues. And so it's just a really delicate situation. Um, but I have to give it to our staff. We're working um, through the problem along with uh, the police department and some several other agencies. We work together as a team. There's four or five agencies that we work together to address all these things. And we'll get a call. And, and definitely there's a nuisance and there's an eyesore. Uh, and we try to address it. But just be aware that it's not as simple as just going out there and cleaning up the mess. It, there's a lot of other steps that go along with it as well. Okay. But you're real good about doing it, though. I'll say that. Because when Dave was on vacation the last time, I called. And Leanne took care of it, and I forwarded him those yep. pictures of uh, basically shopping carts full of materials, and um, um, I know of at least five within my district that have homeless living in the park right, at some point in time. So, yeah, we had discussed before the meeting, and and, and I've had um, I actually was going to say this for the president's update at the end, but I that one piece of that was I'd had people from uh, the disc golf community in particular talk about Herman Hill Park down at. Pawnee and Broadway and sent me pictures and, and speaking of real concern. And consequently, I reached out to uh, Council Member Ballard because I know she's been really dedicated to uh, homeless outreach. Uh, and she was working with Council Member Hoheisel because it was his district. And I think that, I mean, the whole point of that discussion, and we can have more of that discussion now if we'd like, but, but the point of my conversation with Council Member Ballard and Hoheisel was specifically because we have this new budget allocated expanding the the uh, schedule of the homeless outreach team we have I mean that's so I think it, there this is an opportunity to be proactive because I mean that's really what this budget allocation is for and these are park assets where it's unsafe uh, to have people um, you know living out of those places so if we can make some proactive community focused responses to this I hope you know and I don't know if that would require a vote or a recommendation but I can tell you that from my perspective, um, I would hope that we could lead. I mean, we have this, this new policy orientation that says, you know, we've got, you know, homeless outreach that needs to take place. So I really hope um, we can lean on Officer Nate, for example, to lead the way specifically on our park assets. Because and, and so if, if in those conversations, just make sure that, that you know um, there are council members who are aware of this. I'm 
very much invested in this because these are people's lives and, and I want to make certain people are safe on our assets and not making bad choices just because they don't know of other options. So um, I, I certainly support the effort there. Um, so did anybody else have any other points they would like to make on this particular piece? Oh, excuse me. Uh, yes, uh, uh, Ms. Fleming. No, please. Making, if you have some land or some space somewhere where you can just say, okay, this is an area and we're going to monitor this, this is what our expectations for this, to stay in this area and safely, uh, and work towards maybe, I don't know, those little mini houses or something eventually, but uh, an area, because we have such a big homeless area, and it is such an eyesore, and it's just, I'm a human service kind of. For sure. Where my, all my education is from. So uh, I was just wondering about that. I so I'm going to repeat your question because there are people following online who didn't hear you because there's there's no microphone out there. She had asked us, um, uh, Ms. Fleming from the, from the audience had asked, if the city has assets on hand right now where we do allow for people to have extended, you know, maybe there are going to be some folks who may not. Uh, fall into the category of the housed population for one reason or another. What are some city assets uh, that we own that we legally can can have? Is that a discussion that we've had before? I, I don't know the answer to that, Marjorie. So I, I would I would appreciate um, some kind of direction on that. So there's two different levels. There would be the policy level, and then there's the staff and operational level. As a staff member, we have not talked about that, um, and. You know, it, we would get direction from uh, from the elected officials for a policy on how to address that, and it's a pretty big uh, topic. There, there's there's no silver bullet, and and there's a lot of pros and cons on each one of these situations. So um, I would suggest that we continue to talk and share that information to our elected officials uh, to get a little bit of direction on what we want to do. Um, I know from my colleagues from across the country, uh, there's a lot of places that do that. Uh, a good example is um, my hometown is Albuquerque, New Mexico. There's a park that is just dedicated solely for the homeless to have encampments. And they put down porta potties and other type of support systems for them, um, water, and, and work with them in regards to trying to find them permanent shelter. Uh, so all those things would really need to take a deep conversation, um, taking it to the next level. Uh, there's a lot of other expectations that would need to happen. I have not been involved with any kind of conversation like that, but um, not to say that it's not an opportunity. Um, uh, it's something that we can share uh, with our electeds. I mean, I, I really appreciate the thought uh, because this is how these conversations get started. Uh, things don't change unless people have these thoughts and bring them forward and say, why can't we try something like this? I, I know that there are many people who would want to continue having that. Thank you very much for the presentation, Gary. Uh, I, I know there are a lot of people who are uh, interested in that kind of conversation. So let's, let's talk about this further. I would like to talk to you about it more, and I know that there are council members who, who feel the same way. Uh, so again, thank you very much uh, for the maintenance and forestry update. Let's roll into Park Foundation, if you have an update. I don't, I haven't received anything uh, from them, Troy. So I attended the last meeting and there's uh, some things that they're looking at in regards to creating some different revenue streams uh, to go back into the parks. Uh, they're also looking at a marketing campaign to really market the plates for parks, um, which I'm sure everybody has a plate for park. I'm sure everybody has a Wichita flag on their license plate. Um, but the cool thing about that is that it's bringing in over $20,000 a month um, going into the, to their coffers. So um, they've been a great partner. They've definitely supported some of my, our initiatives. So the bridge over at Swanson Park, they donated money to that. Uh, Chester I. Lewis, they've donated money to that um, and several other projects. I think the marketing wants to really kind of give recognition for all the things that they've done which I don't think uh, too many people know. So um, they've collected a lot of money and uh, we wanna work with them to find some good projects to match uh, that, that we have on our, our CIP. Um, 
They're going to be at open streets, I think, um, handing out water. So hopefully you guys are all going to be at open streets and can say hello to all the folks over at the uh, Park Foundation. I love that. Okay, I'm going to buzz through a couple of quick things uh, that I wanted to mention before we adjourn. Uh, Number one, I had been speaking specifically with council member Maggie Ballard uh, regarding the issue of skate parks. She had been uh, reached out, a member of the community had reached out regarding uh, utilization of our skate parks and the future of our skate parks. Uh, I bring this up because I want to encourage anybody listening, anybody watching at home, uh, uh, to contact not only your council members, but uh, members of the park board on these issues. Uh, I would like to have a deeper discussion on uh, the current status of our skate parks as they exist across our system, uh, improvements that may be needed. So if you are interested in joining that conversation, please reach, reach out to me. Katie, I would also ask if it's possible if we could have a promotion of that. We can talk about that offline, what that promotion might look like. But I would like to solicit feedback about what our current, uh, Troy and I discussed this last week, what does our current capacity look like? As a, as a park system and what possible improvements would the community be interested in participating in and possibly raising money for, like we've seen with other items. Uh, secondly, speaking of money, I know there's been a lot of discussions uh, about new assets and revitalization of assets. And at the end of the day, it always comes back to, well, what's the bottom line? What is gonna be the funding source for this? Another issue that Troy and I had brought up uh, was this revenue source for, for so many uh, uh, projects. Uh, I question and I wonder whether or not there's an idea that we're leaving some money on the table out there. There's a big, uh, you know, we are existing in a, in a time where our country is, is giving out a lot of grants for park systems. Is, is there a possibility that the city of Wichita should have a discussion about uh, using a consultant or hiring a, a grant writer, somebody specifically that can help our park system capture more grant dollars? Uh, and there may be other uh, city departments that might benefit from that as well. Uh, so I had the discussion with Troy. Uh, after that, I spoke with Mayor Whipple about that uh, suggestion, and he was supportive, and he will be bringing that uh, before uh, the city manager uh, just to prioritize that. Because I'm, I, I think about a lot of these ideas. Let's at least make certain we're doing our diligence that there might be a way to fund this stuff. Uh, because we have to say no a lot. Uh, and that's OK, because we're talking about tax dollars. Uh, but if there are potentially um, uh, funding sources that come from other other means, uh, let's let's have that conversation. So hopefully we can hear back from that in the future. Um, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that I was forwarded a couple of emails uh, that were not supportive of the vote uh, that we took uh, on pickleball. Um, so it was not a universal support uh, for the change. But I just wanted to uh, mention because I'd be remiss if I did not. Uh, that is, you know, I, I stand by the vote that we had. I trust this board and I trust the decision-making process. Uh, and now it is in the hands of council, but I just wanted to give the feedback uh, that there has been some pushback now that it's up to the council level. Um, finally, and uh, sorry to take so much time on this, but I wanted to circle back on a discussion that we'd had in the past about visioning and about uh, some of the park resources as a system we have moving forward. I had various discussions with Tim, for example, uh, and, and various other people over the months. I was actually hoping this month we were gonna have a guest join us for public comment uh, who is working on uh, some really exciting opportunities in urban agriculture uh, to talk about alleviating and directly addressing some of the issues that we have in Wichita with regard to food deserts and water access. Um, so all of these issues continue to exist and I would like to have a holistic discussion about this and about these priorities as they relate to the park system and, and really what this board is interested in, in pursuing and not only that but what the, what the people in our, in our constituencies, what, what are the districts really looking for. Um, so between now and uh, the middle of November, I would really like to solicit that kind of feedback as well. Uh, because I've looked at the, at the calendar and I, I'm looking at November 18th for uh, throwing out a date for a, a retreat for the park board offsite. Uh, where between now and then, I would challenge every member to um, reach out to your communities and talk about the park system as it stands now. What are the things that we love about the park system? What are the things that, that really, if we have the opportunity to rewrite the rules and, and rewrite the charter of what we're looking to do, 
how could we make, just like Jesse said, how can we make it perfect? I, I'd say if I, if, if I could look at a lot of the, the performance that the staff is doing right now, you guys are doing pretty well. How is it that we can do better? How is it that we can be better serving uh, the needs of the public, not only now, but looking 5, 10, 50 years into the future? Because we are talking about public land. The reaction that you're going to see from the people when we're talking about the sale of public land, I, I, we take it very seriously because that's a permanent thing. Um, and I would like to bring everybody together in November to talk about those issues. Uh, and I think that as we get feedback from the public, I think we can start to build out an agenda for that. But I wouldn't want to take up too much, too much time, but I'd like to get people together and kind of have that open discussion. So between now and then, I'd like to talk, uh, open it up for feedback from the public on that. So I, when we get offline, I'll, I'll speak to that as well. So I will close out with that. Does anybody have any questions about any of those thoughts? Okay, then I will kick it over to Troy for his update. All right, so I got a list of things. <clears throat> uh, through the CIP process, we were talking a little bit about the Pickleplex, and just wanted to give you a quick update. We have um, hired a, a designer, and we've got three different renditions that we're looking at. We've met with USA Pickleball, and we wanted to get USA Pickleball's um, uh, comments on it as well. Uh, we did get that, and I think it's tomorrow we are meeting with the, uh, uh, the pickleball community here in Wichita to see how they feel about the design that we put together for the Pickleplex. Again, that's going to be down at South Lakes. So um, my biggest concern is when we put a budget together uh, two years ago when we first proposed the idea, and we actually hired a consultant um, to help us with it, we came up with $3 million, and I'm really concerned that that $3 million isn't going to be enough. But we'll see. We'll take it one step at a time. But I did want to give you guys an update that that is happening, and I do owe a gentleman that sent me an email over the weekend. Um, he was asking about it. I do owe him an email that I'm going to try to get done today. Um, before I forget, Reggie, for next month, can you give us uh, uh, attendance at each one of the pools? attendance of each one of the pools next month okay uh, the Korean monument I'm not sure if you guys recall that, uh, that we had a, a vehicle stray off the road and smashed into the Korean War monument and it's actually an arch and we did have that disassembled oh, about two and a half weeks ago <clears throat> and I'm working right now to see what the estimate is to have it replaced um, I'm guessing the number is going to be somewhere 200 to $250,000. Uh, we're hoping that the, their insurance will pay for it. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a huge challenge that we'll have to go. I think we might have to actually um, go after the insurance company and we'll see what happens. But uh, I did want to give you an update on that. That uh, archway has been removed and the top part of it is being stored over at uh, Forestry. Thank you very much for letting us keep it there. Um, the November 18th workshop, I've been kind of calling around to see what kind of locations we can have um, that's going to also support um, having, us, having it online. So that's going to be the challenge for me. Um, if worse comes to worse, we'll have it back here. Uh, this is still a great venue, but having an off-site is always kind of a, a change of uh, environment so one of the things that we've been working on a lot <clears throat> and we call it JEDI which is um, social justice equity diversity and inclusion and some folks just call it uh, DIE uh, for short um, but we have a committee of staff members that we're working on really focusing on bringing in diversity into our department, but not also just our staffing, but also with all of our programming as well. And we've been doing great strides in that, and I think it's something that's really important that we always have in the forefront of all of our programming. That our staff members at each one of the rec centers has been working on that. Um, and so there's a lot of equity questions as well. And um, Ma'am, you, you brought up one of the questions in regards to equity for dog parks in different areas of the city. That's always something to discuss, equity in regards to pickleball um, uh, tennis courts, equity in regards to splash pads, equity in regards to swimming pools, 
Uh, those are physical assets, but also some of our programming things as well. So those are all things that we work on, and we have a committee uh, within our staff that works on and looks at all that. So I just wanted you guys to be aware of that. Give you guys a quick update on the tree policy. Okay. Talk about burying the lead. <laughs> so um, we've been working a lot on the tree policy. We brought that to you folks um, three or four months ago. It's also been an item that we workshopped. Uh, we're working on some of the final details with that. It is one thing to go from uh, a concept to implementation and how does it impact projects, how does it impact staff, how do we incorporate it. And so uh, those aren't easy things to do. And so that's something we've been working with public works and with engineering and because really it impacts uh, those folks the most. Um, so, you know, an example is what we just talked about with uh, the Hyatt, losing those trees, how do they get replaced um, in a way that's fair and equitable without gouging somebody, but also holding people responsible for the amount of trees that, that are removed. Um, that's going to be a discussion that we're going to have at uh, McAdams when we put in the fourth baseball field. Um, there's going to be removal of trees for putting in that baseball field, but one of the expectations is that uh, League 42 is going to replace those trees at other locations. How do we do that in a way that's fair and equitable? So those are all discussions that we're dealing with to finalize the tree policy. I'm hoping that when I get back from conference next week um, that we can start putting a, a date where we can go take it to council. And with that, we'll have real-life examples of what um, tree replacement looks like with each one of our projects. Okay. Um, we talked a little bit about plans for tree planting, and that's going to be a meeting that we're going to have with our finance folks to find out actually how much dollars we have. And from that, we'll be putting a plan together. Uh, Gary, obviously, with his staff, he's at 55% staffing. Mm -hmm. um, to turn around and expect him to, to plant even more trees is going to be really difficult. Um, we do have savings from all the salary savings and we want to put that in place and use that as a leverage tool to plant more trees so we're going to put a plan together and we will uh, probably um, in the october meeting have a better plan to share with you guys okay um, next week uh, reggie and i and several staff members were going to phoenix for conference um, I'll be presenting on a couple items. Uh, we got uh, several meetings with some of our colleagues from across the country on really important topics, trees being one of them. Um, and uh, the big thing that we're going to find out is whether we're a gold medal winner because we are a finalist. And going along the theme of being perfect, uh, what Jesse was talking about, um, I think we have a pretty strong department. Uh, we do a lot of great things. And being a gold medal fa finalist, and even if we do win the gold medal, doesn't mean that we are the best department in the country. It means that we're endeavoring to be perfect. Mm. And we're always trying to take us to the next level. Um, and I always brag about our staff, but um, I, I really think we have some awesome staff members that are very dedicated, that work their butts off uh, for the city of Wichita. So conference is going to be fun, but there's a lot of serious work that goes with it as well. Um, a couple more, two more items. Um, one of the things that makes our department so special is uh, example of what Reggie's been working on, um, all, all of our partnerships. And we have partnerships in parks, we have partnerships in golf, we have partnerships uh, throughout the whole department. And, um, but working with the Salvation Army, Reggie did some really great things that really demonstrates how involved our department is. We are very much involved in all areas of the community. And to work with the Salvation Army to get food to our participants was fantastic. Taking it to the next level, getting them backpacks full of school supplies to get them ready for the school year. Um, these are things that people don't know about um, that go above and beyond the expectations of what our programming is and what our staff does. So again, just, just great stuff. It was a long, long, hot, hard summer, um, and it's really unbelievable all the things that, that we get done. 
getting the pools open, going with the transition of losing Brian Hill and bringing on Joe, um, uh, getting all the pools back online. It's just been a long, long summer. And by the way, uh, next time you see Joe, make sure you congratulate him uh, as he is uh, going to be a, a father for the second time. And um, another one of our staff members, uh, Darius, who works in golf, uh, he recently had twins. Um, so we have a lot of new babies coming on board in, in Parks and Recreation. Uh, there's a few other ones that are coming on board as well. So um, we're working hard and we're taking care of our staff and we're taking care of the city of Wichita. All right, does anybody have any questions of Troy? Then on that, I think uh, we've, we've said, said it all indeed. So I will make a motion to adjourn. Can I get a second? Second. All right, uh, let's go ahead and uh, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed, motion carries. We are adjourned. Thank you very much. <laughs>